here is where it all starts we're going to look at this frame by frame like usual just to make sure we don't forget anything anything Let's just at least wait for the lighting to get better i think this is a new armor it's just hard to see but guys does this remind you of anything that's actually in the game i know no one wears these ugly robes except the except the kevins that that uh that have a rainy hat but it's millennia this is millennia's armor it's millennia's cloak yeah so you guys actually do wear these skirts okay all right then Honestly, like, there's no surprise there. Like, uh, everyone was speculating that we were going to enter the world through, uh, through Mogwin's palace. So I don't think anyone is shocked here. No, Melina's, Melina's cloak isn't playable. Oh, okay. Okay, so it is new then. Well, some somewhat. Or maybe you're saying that it is, like, this is not the player. This is actually Melina. Or Melon, or whatever their name is. So this isn't even the player. Well, I, I don't know. It could be playable. I think it's the player. Climb into the egg. Yeah, climb into the egg, bro. It's comfy in there. Just trust. Trust the process. And like about long black screen right here. I think this is the best, uh, the best shot of the trailer. This is just beautiful opening shot. It's just really, really, really. Oh, one sec. Do you guys catch that? Do you guys catch that, dude? It slipped them. You see that? Watch here. <laughs> Bro, it slipped through the cracks. It ain't perfect. Some popping. <laughs> anyway, it's irrelevant. It's just joking, but the castle looks good though. Like there's a lot like personally speaking, out of sight, out of render, yeah, pretty much. But like, uh, what's I think what's best in this shot, aside from like overall, like the beautiful composition and everything, what's great is that we see a lot of structures. We see a lot of structures, bridges, and in for us, for us that actually play the game, these structures are the best places to actually enjoy the game. Like the the best areas in the base game are Stormvale Castle, like, um, you know, uh, Lanedale, uh, you name it. Like, it's all, um, it's all legacy dungeons, right? Like, all the best areas, all the most fun areas, whether it be for PvE or PvP, it's all castles. And what do we get in that shot? Like, yes, we get the empty open plane that serves the only purpose to just, you know, fill the the adventure to get there but when we actually get there we actually seems we seem to get a lot of castle and in my opinion the castle are the maps that from software are best at executing and in and i think in all of their games their best maps are all like actually castles so i'm actually really happy to see that in this shot even though this is just a shot you know, they wouldn't be showcasing all these in the distance if they were not playable. I, I believe we can we can assume that all these places are playable. And that's really good news. The fact that we get so many structures, that means we're going to get a lot of castles to play in. So I'm really, really happy about that. That means some good areas for PvP, fellas. That's what it means. Yeah, the ambience. Yeah, I was talking to Nash about this earlier basically 
it feels like this whole trailer is going back a little bit toward what From Software is pretty much known for, which is more dark fantasy than like classic fantasy or like more like brighter fantasy, like yeah, underworld color and such. Like it feels like we're going a little bit back closer to like the souls in terms of ambience and everything than we are in the base Elden Ring game. Like the ambience looks a lot closer to the Souls game than it is to High Fantasy from Elden Ring, like with uh, with like a Limb Grave, right? Very different vibe, and I think From Software is probably best at executing this particular vibe. Look at that, dude. We were spe speaking of castles earlier. Let's just take a look real quick. Take a look at that right here. No, that's rock right here. Little house, big castle, big castle here, 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 big bridge here. I think even here. That's a lot of really interest. That's a lot of spots that are going to be interesting to uh, to explore. That's for sure. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, if we can get, like, how many is that? Let's count. One. Let's make sure I'm not missing any. Two. This I'm not going to count because it just looks like a house. Three. Four. Five. Six. Uh, I don't know if this is seven or not. Let's see. Let's just say six. Seven. And then eight. Just in that shot, we get like... Uh, I don't know what's up there. Maybe even another one. Yeah, that's another one. So like nine, we get like a shot. And then there's this here, but that looks fairly open. There's some ruins there, probably base ruins. I think we get a better look here. It's basically like one structure here. Uh, One here, clearly. Some sort of like fallen tower here. You know, obviously the castle there with the bridge leading up to it. Another structure back there. The big one here. The tower where you get your, your useless rune. And then the bridge, another structure there. Another one here. Like broken bridge. And then another one there. There's a, there's a lot of stuff. It definitely, most definitely does not look empty. That's good. There's a teleporter in the fog. You mean this here? In the fog. Do you mean like this right here? A teleporter. Uh, tree roots. Are you speaking about that? Like these things here? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, but there's many of them, so they're, they could be like broken. Like these, these, these. I don't see any one of them activated. They're probably just using it like to decorate. That's a new armor. Some knight, some knight, some knight uh, helmet that doesn't seem to look too weird. So, holding my breath here for this armor to look good. Looks good from the back. We don't see the full top of the helmet. Maybe like there's a fucking huge, <laughs> huge thing coming out of the top here that is out of frame. But, oh no, it's not. Okay, we're good. <laughs> yeah, it does look like uh, Wilhelm. That's true. It does look like him. Dude, I cannot wait for Nash to wear the Princess Leia gladiator. <laughs> he said he liked it. You know? I'm not gonna touch that. You guys can play Princess Leia all you want. I'm gonna be wearing Big Boy. Maybe this one, maybe the other one. This one looks good, though. For heavy armor, you know? 
I think my standards probably have diminished a little bit with uh, what we got in the base game. But for a heavy armor, it does look good. I like it. Looks like some sort of golem armor. Yeah, it does look inspired by uh, Havel armor for sure. Also, I mean, I don't know if it's the player wearing a new armor if this is an enemy. But the proportion would indicate that we can wear this. I think. Oh no, the sleep area. <gasps> you guys are so right. Oh my god, everything is purple. Of course it's a sleep area, dude. That's why the dude is sleeping. It's It might be St. Trina. Might be St. Trina in the sleep swamp. <laughs> Look, there's water there. It's the sleep area where everywhere you walk, there's like some sort of sleep fog that you have to be careful about. Oh my god, that is so true. Wow. So there is a sleep area. God damn it, man. <laughs> Yeah, it absolutely does look like it. I think you guys are on the money with this one. Sleep gank, let's go. Yeah, oh yeah. And then beautiful castle. With Ronaldo sitting on his throne. Ooh, what is that? Is that... Uh... If not after this. Guys, I think that might be new armor here. I think that's a new armor. It's hard to tell what it looks like, but I don't remember having like two separate capes like that. That's a new armor. And that uh, that is absolutely a madness swamp. <laughs> that is absolutely a madness swamp, dude. <laughs> That is 110% of Madness Swamp. So, we get the sleep area, the Madness Swamp. Now we just need the Dead Blight stuff. But, I mean, come on now. It absolutely is. Or Dead Blight? You think it could be Dead Blight? I mean, it could be. But the color would seem to indicate that it's Madness, but we don't know for sure. But it is absolutely... There's just no doubt that this swamp is going to give you some sort of status. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But the, the map, yeah, the map looks beautiful. Like, these trees, like, wow. This is this is absolutely beautiful. This, this whole map looks amazing. Like, uh, jokes aside from the swamp. And I'm actually curious to, to know what that armor actually looks like from a better angle. It looks interesting. Some uh, <clears throat> some beautiful picture for lore master to analyze. The big pots that you're going to be throwing. What's interesting here is that it actually looks like you might be able to jump on them from here. Also, uh, here, I'm trying to see. Okay, no, there's not, there's nothing new there. He's just. I was trying to see if it was like a new weapon, but he's just holding a staff and a rapier. There's nothing new there. But... But... Uh, weird structure here, though. This looks like... Um, those, uh, those dungeons with the chariots, but, you know, th it's the new version. It's different. But I think it's going to be one of those dungeons. Yeah, some sort of weird lava pipe. Very interesting, though. Looks in... Oh, dude. Oh, my God. I don't think I realized that this shot was in the trailer. Dude, this is what I'm talking about. Look at that. Look at this. Like, just think about this. This whole castle... Is going to be explorable. This is a legacy dungeon, guys. And look at that. It goes all the way up here. This is this is all going to be playable, fellas. This is what I'm talking about. This, this right here. This is the good stuff. Really, 
this looks like it's going to be a really good map. That's what it looks like. It's going to be an amazing castle to play in. And again, what are From Software's best map? They're all castles. All their best maps, the most fun maps are all castles. Like just look at Stormvale. Just look at like, uh, you name it, Dark Souls 1, Lawtrick. You just, just think about all the, the stuff that From Software makes. They're really good at their quote unquote legacy dungeons as, they're, as they call it. And especially big castles. Really happy about this. I, I did not realize this shot was in there. And then you got the uh, the pathway leading up to it. it. Even looks like a side of grace there, but it's not important. And then we get to uh, to the bosses. I don't know what this is supposed to be. To be honest, his leg is shaking. It looks like a mix between like uh, uh, what's it called? Like that. Uh, that boss, like, not Mito or... <laughs> you know, that boss, I think, in... Um... Fuck, what was his name? No, no, not in Elden Ring, in, in Souls. No, not Lords of Cinder. Nito, there you go, Nito, yeah. It looks like a mix of Nito and Fire Giant. Like, if you take a look, look at the, the bodies there. Like, Nito and Fire Giant strapped together. <laughs> That's what it reminds me of. It's a Berserk reference. Yeah, I don't follow, like, the Berserk manga. I've only seen the original anime. Like, the 1990-something anime. The good one. Not the fucking 3D CGI garbage. Well, for those of you who like to get fucked, <laughs> well, it's going to be a good time. Yeah, brain suckers. And then this is uh this is great value uh Malikid's brother. Looks interesting. It actually reminds me of uh, the Titans in Attack on Titan. Just the way, just the way he goes in and attacks with his mouth like that. It absolutely does remind me of Attack on Titan. Dude, it actually does. Re Dude, it's so reminiscent of Malekith. But I mean, it's the same theme. Like this is sort of like the dragon area, kinda with the lightning and all. They're probably related. Could I could even be his Malekith's brother or something? Could be a thing. People are suggesting that this could be Rikard. I think that's a good guess. It's a very good guess. Honestly, I mean the I mean the snake the snake really does indicate that this is Rikard, especially given that he has like those wings too, like some sort of like demon lord. And who else but Rikard to be that sort of demon lord that has like a wing like that and then this, the big snake. And also the fire, not to mention that his power is fire, right? And on top of that, uh, Rikard has been a fan favorite. So I don't think it's far fetched for FromSoft to uh there's even like dude there's there's even a snake on his helmet. Like it has to be him. It has to be. And even his eye, he has the eyes of a snake. Dude, I wonder if we could actually compare that. Uh Let's just see if we can find a, a mug shot of Rikard just to see his eyes. Oops, did I? Oh, I. Um, there you go, guys, 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 guys. I'm telling you, look at these eyes. Look at these eyes. 
Just look at it. Lore master at work. Just appreciate. Same lips. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I mean the uh, it it does it does indicate that this is likely him. Same lips, dude. I'm probably the first one to notice the lips. <laughs> Oregon, thanks for the resub for 17 months, man. The new... Okay, so the new weapons... Oh, there's also a chandelier from the boss that I didn't notice because of the curve sword. I don't, I don't think that's going to be a weapon, but there's all like every time you see an enemy wielding something or having an armor that looks humanoid enough, there's always a chance that you can wear it or wield it in from soft games. So I don't know, maybe this could be some sort of catalyst or it just could be just speculation. Then we get these swords here, which... People are saying Dancer Sword. Let's just... Take a moment here. You know, I, I see the moveset, but let's just forward here. Do you guys think... Because I, I don't think that these are the same as these. It doesn't look like the same moveset. This is more like... This is more like the dancer type moveset right here. Right? Do you guys agree? Like, this is more like dancer type and... And this... This one here is like another one. Like this looks... This moveset looks different. Or do you guys think it looks the same? Because I think it looks different. For like... Basically like what Nash was speculating though. Which could be the case. What Nash was speculating is that this... Tak tak. Tak tak. Shloom. Bang. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but what I'm trying to demonstrate here is that... This could be, uh, let's see, L2, L2, and then you get, or like some sort of like L2, L2, like this is the first part of the Ash of War. And then follow up is this whole thing right here. Like you get the L2, L2, which is the first part, and then you get the follow up. So basically like tack, 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 shloom, bang. <laughs> <laughs> so basically like bloodhound fang you know how bloodhound fang has like the the spin first and then goes backward and then does the follow-up right so you got your first your first sequence bang bang sloop slap then boom <laughs> <laughs> no but for real though like this is this is what i think it is yeah it could be like yeah, l2 r2 or something like that. Like basically what we're seeing here. I think has a very high chance of not being the actual moveset. And being an Ash of War. With that being said. Uh, maybe there is. Like maybe those swords for instance have the same actual moveset. And not the same Ash, Ash of War as, uh, as the Dancer here. So basically. This could be the actual moveset, even though it's a different weapon. Or they could both be different. I actually think they're different, but we're just, you know, we're just speculating for fun, obviously. But I think that there's a possibility that this could be, like, the L1 or R1 moveset. And then this other sequence here. Actually, I should, I should finish it, though. Show the entire thing. So there's a possibility that this is like the moveset. So you get your L1, L1, L1 spam or whatever. And then there's a possibility that this this was the L1 spam. And then this is the ash, the actual Ash, ash of War, right? Boom, boom. <laughs> Sling, slung. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What's, I think what's great that I was not expecting, and I think it, like, if, uh, if I was to make, like, a, a 1.11 request or 1.12 request for, like, the next, not, like, 1.11, but let's say the, the feedback for 1.12, like, 
I'm, I'm not going to do it now, obviously, but like I'm thinking we're seeing a lot of like cool looking consumables. And I believe that a lot of consumables in Elden Ring, in Elden Ring would be a lot more fun if they did full poise damage. So like the all the pots, I don't think the pots would be broken, OP, annoying or anything like that if they did full pot, full uh, full poise damage, for instance, right? I don't think that, um, like, uh, what's it called? Gravity fan would be that broken or that annoying or anything like that if it did full, po uh, full poise damage. I think a lot more consumable should have full poise damage to be used more because otherwise, a lot of these consumables are useless. Like, for instance, the throwing knives, like fan daggers or anything, if I don't think they need, like, any, like, any poise increase that would be crazy but for stuff like you know the 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 pots that you throw the gravity chunk that you throw on the floor like i think all this stuff should do like max poise damage looks strafable yeah these like the reason why i'm mentioning this is that there's a lot of consumable items like these right here that look very interesting in this uh in this trailer look at that schlong Schlang? Peef, poof. Okay, I'm gonna stop. But, no, for real though, you see the... He shoots like basically two in a row. There you go. He shoots one, two, and then there's the follow-up. But it's always in succession of two. Although, what's most important from an actual gameplay perspective is how long it takes for the first throw. And that first throw, I would say, is probably in line with, like, the, you know, the Kukri maybe a little bit faster. So, um, you think it's an Ash of War? You think it's an Ash of War? It could be, actually. Dude, you might be right. You guys are bringing some great ideas. You might be right because they, I mean, I don't know. It looks like a consumable. It could be an Ash of War, just like uh, Spectral Spear. Like you had spe or Spectral Lance. You had Spectral Lance. Now you have Spectral Daggers, right? That that actually, that probably is more likely that this is Spectral Daggers, Ash of War, than it is a consumable. I think you're right. Like, yeah, Spectral Daggers, I think is... The most logical thing here. That's a good, uh, good observation. Yeah. Interesting. I don't know though. What's interesting about this? I, I'm wondering because you guys know how it is in Elden Ring, right? There's no like paired weapons other than like fist, claws, and everything. But like for instance. We don't have any, like, class of paired curved sword. Is this a new class that's legitimately, like, two curved swords that come together and then we get these ones, we get these ones, and this is, like, part of the new, like, paired curved sword class, just like we got claws, just like we got fists? Or is it, like, just the... You know, this is a new DLC weapon, but they decided to give the character two of them. And this is the, like, unique Ash of War on it. And they don't necessarily come together. There's just two of them. And then it's the same deal with uh, with the other character here. Obviously, this one's an enemy. So he's obviously going to have the two same ones. So is there an, ex like, is there an explanation behind this in a sense that... Do we actually know... If these weapons come together or not. I don't think we do. I don't think we do. Also, Thomas Steve, thank you so much for the 16 months, man. Reverse grip, paired curve sword. There you go. Also, let me just make sure that the katana is... Because uh, I said it was the R1. It definitely looks like just the R1. Yeah, it's just the R1. I was just making sure that... Yeah. This, though, the new Lance has arrived. 
That I'm looking forward to play with. The new Great Lance. That's going to change it all. Dude. I wonder, like, this is likely going to be, like, a build exclusive thing. I just wonder, is this going to be... Because this is lightning, there's a chance that it could be dex. But because this is purple, it's much more likely to be a gravity weapon. But since it's a lance, it could still be, like, a strength weapon. So... I don't know, it could be a magic a weapon for magic build, could be a, a split weapon for magic strength, it could be just a strength or just a magic weapon. The crouch attack pulls your opponent in! Oh, QI, that is evil. That's just fucking evil. Strength in, in your opinion? I think strength intelligence is indeed the most likely scenario. Just because the way he holds it, like this, this screams like the gravity effect from what we've had this so far. Like this, it just screams the gravity effect. Like it's, I don't see it being anything else. Also, we skip some things after, so let's go back. Okay, okay. Also, no, uh, like we we're paying attention to the weapons. Let's rewind again. Just make sure we don't miss anything in the background either, right? Because there's always clues. There's always clues about little things hidden in the background. Like right here. No, I'm just kidding. There's nothing. Uh, maybe not for the boss room. I don't, I don't think there's going to be anything uh, necessarily worth looking for in the boss rooms. But afterward, when they showcase the weapons, sometimes there's interesting things in the background. But I am in no rush, guys. Like, for instance, here, uh, obviously, we see the door here. Actually, the door reminds me of these doors that lead us to um, to the whale dungeons, right? You guys know what I mean? Like, uh, well, I mean, you know, there's not that many dungeons. Like, the, these doors look like the doors you get in to get into dungeons, and this looked like the actual level. But what's interesting here is the... I think there's like some sort of I'm not sure if there's a pathway there, but definitely a path up top here. A lot of new enemies. Varied enemies, that's for sure. Let's take a look at their uh, their attacks. Yeah, catacomb, thank you guys. Catacomb. You know what? It reminds me a little bit of the, the Gru enemies. In the Dark Souls 3 Swamp. Revamped, obviously. But, uh... The Gru casters reminds me a little bit of them. See that? See that, guys? Do you see this? Nothing escapes the lore master. <laughs> Grab that item when you play. Okay, also here, uh, I think what was interesting here is like the whole, again, like we were talking about structures and castle earlier. This, however, reminds me more of um, of the city areas rather than the castles. Like um, like that, that ghost town in Kaelid where you have to, lit, to light the, the three flames up top. Like, this reminds me more of that, or like something like Landale, maybe, but I don't know. It actually does not really remind me as much as Landale, more of like the ghost town in Kaelid. I think that's what, uh, that's what it looks like. Oh shit, we got a lost raid! What's up, raiders? Welcome in. We are doing the usual three-hour-ish analysis of the DLC, frame by frame, the DLC trailer. Gathering as much information as we can. Uh, also, Resling, thank you so much for the resub for 29 months. But yeah, Lost, thank you so much, dude. Really appreciate. And then also... Uh, guys, welcome. Welcome, welcome. We're going to go over everything once again. But we're taking our time here. We are in no rush whatsoever. The enemy has a cleaver. Yeah, I think we know this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but yeah so so far 
since you guys just came in, uh, what we were speculating on is at first we thought that these might be a new consumables, the double daggers, but someone suggested that it could be actually like spectral lance, but basically spectral daggers. And I think that's probably more likely that this is some sort of spectral dagger, Ash of War. Invader Tim, thanks for the gifted sub. Really appreciate. And then, obviously, we get the big pew pew spell that I'm always on the fence about these because I feel like it's either it's too strong or either it's just really bad. And it's always like that. It's always either one or the other. It's <laughs> it's never in the middle. And I look at this, I'm thinking, okay, maybe that's going to be like really strong in PvE, but maybe that's going to be like useless in PvP. Or because it's such a large area, it's going to be like a pain in the ass. It's, it's too hard to know from just watching this, but it always scares me a little bit <laughs> to see like that many effect, like such a large area of effect spell. It's always a little bit scary, I must admit. Also, let's take a look at the the um the map in which they're fighting. It looks actually pretty nice, but let's just let's just pause at the frame swap. Trying to see if there's like anything interesting in the back here. I don't think so. At least not that we can see. Not sure if this is a boss area or not. Not necessarily really important whether it's a boss area or not, but but it's always nice to pay attention to to the maps because uh, for those of you who just just came in, we were talking about earlier that it's nice that they show a lot of castles in this because what From Software is best at executing are what they call legacy dungeons. And there seems to be a lot of them in there and a lot of castles specifically. And personally, I believe that the best the best map in Elden Ring is probably Stormvale Castle. And I like a lot of maps, but a lot of map like all the maps that I like are all legacy dungeons. So I'm happy to see a lot of legacy dungeon type areas in that trailer. Also, the new enemies, uh, the enemies have a new dagger. That's a good point. Thanks, thanks, guys. You guys are also noticing a lot of things. Let's just pause it, see. I mean, we get a good shot at the silhouette here, but. Without an actual move set, we just really see a model of the dagger, so it's hard to uh, to gather any like substantial info if we don't see them attacking with it. But here, what's interesting is that particular twin blade here. We see it later in the trailer, so this basically is the enemy that's wielding it. Also, I just realized. Uh, I thought this enemy was a copy-pasted, uh, you know, Landell type Commander Knight, but it's not. It's actually a different model. And because it has very, obviously, similar proportion to the player, I think we're probably going to be able to play in that armor. Which is really nice because we were talking about how there wasn't that many armors that were shown in this trailer, but... I think this might be one of them, actually. This might be one of them, and it doesn't look bad. Like, that helmet looks good. This armor looks good, actually, period. Please have good poise. Yeah, I hope it's not, like, just, yeah, you know, middle-of-the-road poise. Just not good enough to be used. I hope it's not that, but it does look really nice. Sorry, I'm not talking about the kicking thing because we talked about it a lot, but we're going to talk about it. You know, like I said, we're, we're in no rush here. We're going to re-go over this whole thing again a few times. So just uh, paying attention to some of the things we didn't talk about yet. So yeah, that armor is actually good news because it looks really nice. Hopefully it has good enough poise. Now let's talk about the feet weapons. So I guess uh, I guess I need to mention this. The lore behind the feet weapon... I actually started the rumor of Feet Weapon being in the DLC like months before the DLC and I actually made it up. I never heard that anywhere. Like I didn't have like any inside knowledge and it's actually something I made up. I tried to spread and made people believe that there was going to be a Feet Weapon 
and I tried to spread it as much as I could just for the meme. And what's funny is it actually ended up happening. <laughs> there actually was a fucking feet weapon in the trailer, and the, here it is. And it looks it looks interesting. It looks really nice. I wonder though if this is an ability, if this is an Ash of War, because the character, like, the character doesn't look like he's holding like anything. So I genuinely think that this is actually a feat weapon. Look at the fog. Oh yeah, this could be a boss. Could be a boss or it could be before the boss. It looks like some commander type knight, but it could be a boss because the room here looks, looks square. So it's hard to say. Genius, thanks for the resub for 39 months, dude. Thank you so much. Maybe an alternative to natural ash of war that is kick. Oh, dude, that is such an interesting idea. Man, you know what? I, I don't know. I don't know how it would fit into the game, but that's an interesting thought. And that's, that's not impossible. I don't think that's the case, but I would still give it like a good 30% that it could actually be the case. I think, I think it's more likely that this is either a standalone Ash of War or a standalone weapon. But now that you mention it, why not? Why would it not be just a new addition to like the default kick in the sense that you can pick between like either the default kick or this one for like your default kick? But yeah, I think because I'm like on the fence because uh I don't see any weapon anywhere, right? Like his hands are empty. Like it doesn't look like he has like special big boots or anything. Like it just looks like the normal armor. Like the character looks like he's just an armor with no weapon. So that's why I think that your idea is not far fetched at all because we don't see anything. Like he's not holding, like it. Like if if it wasn't for the ends being empty, I would have said that this is likely. Um, like some sort of uh, a fate spell, right? Like this, like this reminds me more of like, oh, okay, maybe it's like some sort of new like fate spell that's like a Shaolin type attack with kicks. But even if you look closely, like the character is as his hands like completely empty throughout the entire sequence, like empty, empty. Then let's try to see the other hand, empty, empty here. Uh, I actually can't see the left hand, but I think I think honestly I think they're both empty. Yeah. So both of his hands are completely empty. So there is no like fate talisman in either hand. So that means that this ability is likely its own thing, I believe. A ring? Oh dude, dude, you guys are you guys are going off with the speculation. It could actually be a ring. Like I was, yeah, I was thinking that this could be an incantation from the look, the visual, the visual indicate uh, incantation, like fate incantation. Visually, it indicates fate incantation, like the the color of the effect, everything. Uh, what about this though? Um, what's this set called, guys? Guys, what is the name of this armor set? The Noble set? Uh, let's open this up. The Confessor? Inquisitor? Is it, is it in the base game, guys? I think it's new. Dude, I think I thought this... Man, I, I confused this set, I think, because of Lords of the Fallen. I thought this wasn't the base game because we've we've seen this in Lords of the Fallen. I thought this wasn't the base game because of that. Like I was actually convinced that this was an old set. <laughs> I think you got yeah, you guys are right. This is new. Like I think because it looks so much like the the one in Lords of the Fallen, like it just it made me think that this wasn't new because I felt like I I had seen it before. 
But yeah, basically the reason why I was asking was that this yellow necklace was very prevalent here. So I was like, maybe this necklace is what's... It, like, maybe this necklace is like some sort of item that's related to the kick. Maybe this necklace is something new that we didn't have. Because keep in mind, guys... Um, what the hell? Keep in mind, uh, up, up, up. keep in mind, guys. When you when you look at the game right now, these two slots are your 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 last two ta uh, talisman slots or uh, ring slots, whatever. And then these ones are empty. Do you guys really think that these two spots? right here, which are empty right now, are going to stay empty forever? Do you guys think that these slots will also stay empty after the DLC? Like, gen like coping aside, I don't think this is coping. I think it's way more likely that the DLC is going to fill in both of these slots rather than they're going to stay empty like this forever. I think that these two slots are going to be something. I don't know what. It could be like a Covenant spot. But then this here, coupled with the fact that we see this here, it makes me think that we might actually be looking at the first necklace item that gives like some new effect of sort. I actually think that this is a new item slot. That's my theory. You might be saying that I'm coping, but I think the logic adds up though. No, no, no. I don't think it's strong coping. I do think the logic adds up really well. Like, think about it. Do you really think that these two slots are going to stay empty forever? Is that really what you believe? You really think that they created this beautiful UI for these two, like for it to have a big hole in there? No, of course not. They made that hole with the fact that they had in mind that later on for added content, they were going to fill it in or they had to cut it out. But because they had to cut it out, maybe they didn't have time to complete it. With the DLC, they most definitely have time to complete it. They were never empty in the previous game. Thank you, Tim. Let's take a look at... Uh... Let's take a look at Dark Souls 3 inventory, for instance. Take a look at this. Guys. Well, I mean, to be fair, this takes two slots and it's the Covenant spot. So, maybe these two spots will take the Covenant spots altogether. <laughs> maybe, maybe actually this necklace is the symbol of your Covenant. Maybe this necklace is the symbol of your covenant. You know, we're we're just making do with what we see. But all thing, all speculations aside, this inventory here is the exact same uh, as this one. It's the exact same. It's just that we are not done with content. This DLC is going to fill that void. This D, I mean, come on, guys. Let's be honest for a second. The DLC is going to fill those. Now, afterward, is it going to, going to fill it with a new item here? I don't know what. And then another item here, which I think would be something like that necklace. Or that necklace is just part of the set and I'm just smoking. But either way, expect something. I think it's fair to expect something here. I don't think I don't think they would just leave the inventory like that. Not after the DLC. I think this is going going to get filled, guys. I think this is going to get filled and to me this necklace is a contender for it. It might not be it. It might just be part of the armor like we've had uh You know, we've had 
ugly pendants before that were part of some armors. It could be just the same thing as the dung either. It could just be like some ugly ass pendant. Well, I mean, this one is more more pimp-like, but... Uh, sorry. This one looks good, though. This pendant looks interesting. I think what we should be looking for, though, from now on for the... I think this pendant is likely part of the armor, though, to be fair. But I think it's worth checking out for other instances in that trailer, if we can see other instances of another pendant like that. I think it's worth uh, paying attention to. Okay, the other big bombshell. Look at this Crash Bantico moment picking up the huge pot and then throwing it for the big explosion. That has me excited. And I think uh, chat gave the best theory so far for this, which is that it's going to be a new craftable pot. I think it's honestly, I think there's a 90% chance that this is going to be the new craftable item. This is going to be the new pot. No, that's not new player armor. That's the, uh, it's one of the first set that you get, no? Unless it's another variation of that first set. That armor. Because this, this is basically the, um, no, this is the, this is the one of the first sets you get. Like you, you actually, um, you get that at the beginning of the game, no? That armor right here. Yeah, it's old armor. I, scale armor. I know, I know, I remember the set. I don't know what it, I forgot the name. Not, yeah, this one. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's not new, guys. This is the one right here. It's one of the first sets you get. Yeah, this, this is not new armor, guys. Okay, but uh, going back to the pot, though. It's funny because there's always that, <laughs> that thing with, like, uh, expansion. It's always make it bigger and make it better. And I feel like the embodiment, the embodiment of that <laughs> is right here. <laughs> make it bigger, make it better. <laughs> like, okay, we have this DLC, we have those enemies, we have these new weapons, these new armors. What do we do for our consumables? Well, we have pots already. Uh, we have knives, okay. We have knives, we have pots, we have a bunch of shit that we can throw already. What do we do? Just make it bigger. <laughs> that was the process. But yeah. I, I do believe that this is going to be, uh, I think it's the most likely going to be the new throwable pot. I wonder how many we can hold though. Is it just one? Is it two? Is it five? Is it three? I think I'm leaning more toward three. But I mean, we don't know. It's just because it's big, you know? It's really big. Ten? You think we can throw ten of these? I mean, I wouldn't be against it because it doesn't look overpowered, but... I really like having, <laughs> I love throwing pots. Like every time I play this game, like big part of my play style is throwing frost pots, throwing sleep pots and just aiming pots at people and adding that to the arsenal for any character sounds appealing to me. I wonder though, like, is this pot going to scale like crazy for strength builds. I mean, logically it does, you know, it would appear so. Like strength build benefit from this. I wonder if it would do crazy damage with the pot head and the pot talisman. I don't know. The NPC getting hit by the pot is using a new ax Thank you. All right, let's, let's try to get a better frame. Yeah, it is absolutely a new axe here. We see it lit. Let's go back again. We're going to take a look. Uh, actually, we can take a look at this environment right now. Let's try to pay attention to that, that environment before we take a look at that axe. 
So what's really nice here is we see like so many so many places in the distance with structures and guys these these i'm gonna keep repeating myself but these are the best spots to play in castles castles towers structures or temple or whatever you name it these are the best spots to play in so the more we see the better that's good it's a good thing so sauron over here on <laughs> On top of this one. I'm also trying to see here if this is a new this is a new shield though. This is not this is not just a new axe. This is a new shield. This is a new armor. And I'm trying to see this might be a new spear as well. Because those enemies, again, very human-like NPCs, so chances are we're going to be able to play all these things. Let's actually do it uh, slower here, frame by frame. So yeah, that new shield actually looks beautiful, I must say. Like, very Viking-looking. I actually really like the look of that shield. I hope it's good. I hope it's good because... Um, as much as I actually do like great shields, I feel like we have some really nice looking great shields in Elden Ring. I don't think we have the, uh, enough good looking medium shields that like, that are good. Like they all look the same and they're, eh, you know, they're not that, that great. Also party poison. Thanks for the gifted subs. Really appreciate new torch. Is it really a new torch? I really can't tell the difference. But yeah, these new shields look really nice. I hope that they're going to have 100% block and that they're going to be uh, on par with the best medium shields that we have now. Because I would most definitely use this shield over the other ones because this shield look, looks really nice. The armor that they're wearing... Oops, sorry. The armor that they're wearing, I would say... Eh, eh, you know, it does the job for an enemy. I would not wear it. The axe, we don't have the best angle because of the little plants, but I hope they give some... Honestly, guys, I hope they give the axes some love. I think right now... I think right now the worst, like, classes in the game are, like, axes. Like, whether it be small or big. Like, if it's not for Ash of War stick, a.k.a. the Stormhawk axe, if it's not for that, like... Axes are just really bad. No, axes are worse than flail because flail have hyper armor, dude. Flail and maces have hyper armor, so you can actually you can actually do pretty good with flail uh, and and axes. But uh, sorry, I said axes with flail and maces, but axes uh, the axes are pretty bad, man. Like move set wise, it's really ash of war stick. So if we basically, so I went on a little ramble there, but basically if we could get some love for the axes, I would like to see, honestly, I would like to see a buff for the axes in general. I would like to see, especially their two-handed moveset to be, I, I mean, I miss the, the, the twin axe from Dark Souls 3. I felt like that moveset was perfect for a two axe. Would have loved to see that in Elden Ring, but if they can give the axes some love, uh, that would be really nice for the next patch or whatever. But <clears throat> I'm uh, I'm just starting to ramble here. Going back to that one, it looks good, but it's hard basically to get excited for that axe, given what we know of the axes that we got so far. Like we got excited for the new people who come in, who came in. We we're excited for a lot of these new weapons. Axes though, they need they need some love. Okay, what else here? This guy, dude. This guy. Guys, I I hope so much that this badass that this badass armor has enough poison. <laughs> Man, this armor looks freaking great. Dude, I love the helmet. I love the Kind of like the hard edge, like almost like a mean machine. This armor looks badass, dude. 
I really hope it has enough poise. I would remove the cape. Personally, I'm not a big... Uh, <laughs> I'm not big into Darth Vader, but... Actually, I, I... Yeah, I'm not big into Darth Vader. But... Man. I know we can remove the cape, because we can with every armor. There's going to be an altered version with no cape, but... Uh, this might become... Guys, this might become our new lap. If, um... You know? If it has enough poise, it has good defense, which is... look, It looks like it. This might be it. This might be what we're looking for right here. Ooh, and also... You know what is the great sword on this back? Dude, this one looks good, though. Look at that pummel. Look at that... Dude, that hilt right here. Dude, that looks good, though. Oh, my God. Dude, that's a nuts reference from Gurks. <laughs> no, but that greatsword looks really nice. I like it. I really like it. Yeah, I really, I really like the overall look of the entire thing. I like the look of the crossbow. I love the look of the armor, and I love the look of the weapon that's on his back. Okay, now, I know what you guys are thinking. Just fucking talk about the damn crossbow. <laughs> we know, guys. We know it shoots 100 bullets. Okay? We all saw it. That's a submachine gun. We we get it. It's it, it's basically like Gale. That's that's what it looks like. It's like Gale, uh, Gale crossbow. That's that's what it uh it reminds me of. When I look at something like this, obviously shooting the the exploding bolts or the fire bolts that we have, I think it's the exploding bolts that we have now. But I wonder how much poise damage that's gonna do. Like, if one bolt obviously doesn't stun, which I don't think it. I mean, I know it doesn't do now. Are these bolts, like, if you get hit by, like, two or three of them, when is it going to, to stun? That's going to be interesting, like, gameplay-wise. Because if you can shoot that thing in such rapid succession like that, maybe it's going to be viable. Because when I look at this, like, I'm thinking, you know, crossbows are definitely not viable right now. Uh, they don't do a lot of damage. They don't do any poise damage. But maybe, maybe this one has a chance because it shoots a lot at a, at, at a time. Maybe you can, like, aim it around while you shoot. Then that could be a really interesting purpose, especially for a finisher, you know? If you can get that to do a decent amount of damage and then someone is low, you pull out your machine gun crossbow, you get some sort of finisher. Or sleep bolts, dude. Oh, dude. Or sleep bolt. Dude. I mean, this this is going to be interesting. This is interesting. I I I want to see it. I want to play with it. I want to try it. It's going to be interesting to see. Obviously, now it's it's a bit too hard to speculate because it's going to depend on like how you can you can aim it around. Because obviously, locked on like you're probably going to be able to like outrun it by running to the side. That's that that seems kind of obvious, but. But if you can, like, aim it around, you know, it might, might be good. Okay, we get some boss. Also, let's just rewind, sorry, real quick. Just making sure we're not missing anything that's happening in the back. So, obviously, looking at a forest, I don't think there's anything of note in these bushes. Wait. Wait. Is that lost right here? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's anything of note in this forest. Let me just rewind a little bit here. Okay, I think that's just the Vagabond set. I was just making sure that the character that was getting shot at didn't have any... Uh, any uh, any unique armor, or any unique gear, or anything, but I think it's just the default, like starting vagabond. Yeah, I think you guys are right. These are the perfumer bolts. 
New sword? Uh, I don't know. New sword? Well, I mean, I said I don't know. Let's just make sure it's not a new sword. No, that's... That's the, uh... Wait a sec, though. This might actually be a new sword. I don't think the... I, guys, I don't think the long sword has... Uh, has leather. Um... Uh, ah, uh, yes, it does. Wait, that's not the long sword in Elden Ring. This one is. It does have leather, I think. No, that's definitely no. It's not new. It's definitely this one. It's the base one. Nope. False alert, guys. Not a new sword. It's most definitely the same. All right. Let's move to the next next scene, though. Okay, big boy. Ooh, that looks like a bear. Guys, that's... That's a new type of bear. <laughs> Look at that. It's blurry, it's moving. But... That's like a bear with like some horns in there, some... Some chains. Look at his legs. Yeah, he has human legs. They're really weird. What the hell? Is that a spell? Oh no, that's the new dragon spells! Oh my god, dude! It's the new fucking dragon! Now it's a bear! Oh my god! <laughs> it just clicked. Oh my god. Okay, let's, let's take a look. Okay, one sec. Let's take a look at it in real time. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Did you guys see what I just saw? Did you guys see that? Look at the two hitbox. Just look at the two. One, two. Dude, <laughs> I just have a feeling this might be painful to dodge. Like, if it's anything like the. the <laughs> Dude, don't. <laughs> The Dragon Roar is already, like, impossible to dodge on low latency. This one... Look at that. Look at that. Just look at it. Just freaking look at it. It's like... Yeah, it's like Grey, Grey Roar on, on steroid. The two Roar, dude. I'm actually excited. I It might be broken. Maybe not. I don't know. It's too hard to say, but... I don't know. I'm kind of happy to see it. I'm happy that it's a close range attack too. Like this is a roar. So it's not like some projectile. And also now that we know that this is a roar. Let's pay more attention to those pants. Because that armor is new. Whatever he's wearing that looks interesting. With the chains. Like those pants look kind of nice. Could be an enemy, but if it's an enemy, maybe we can wear that. Let's see if we can see his armor better. Yeah, I mean, he has... I mean, it, it is an incantation. You see... You see the catalyst right here. You just see it. It is absolutely an incantation. You see the seal in his hand. So that's that. Weird choice, though, like... <laughs> this bear is... Maybe, like, some, some sort of druid-like incantation. Look at that, though. Won't that be fun to explore? I think it will. Okay, okay. So now that we saw this, which is quite interesting... Let's take a look at the curved swords that come after. So that bear spell, I actually did not notice until just now that this was like a new roar spell. 
I'm very curious. Very curious to see how, that, how it's going to play like. Okay, then we get back to the topic of paired weapons versus having two weapons of the same thing. Bears were speculated to be dragons since whoop, since they uh, since they used to drop dragon hearts in early version or something. I have no idea. There's a new interview with Miyazaki by Famitsu. Great, we're going to finish this uh, this run and then we're going to take a look at it afterward. Okay, so here um, you're going to see this is the dancer. This is like the dancer move set for these twin curve swords. Now the question is, well first that armor is going to likely be playable as well. But the question is, like, I don't want to spoil the beautiful uh, weapon here. The question is, though, we see two curved swords with a unique move right here, right? We see two curved swords here, which we speculated that this is likely an Ash of War, where the process is L2, and then L2 again, and then you have, like, some sort of, like, follow-up. So L2, sorry. Let me actually sync what I'm saying with what's happening on screen. Okay, so you get one L2, which hits with both. Follow-up L2, which hits with both again. And then the follow-up R2, like some sort of Bloodhound Fang type Ash of War, where you get the follow-up that comes after. So I think this is what it's like. Not an L1, I think this is an Ash of War. And that whole, I think that whole sequence is one Ash of War with the follow-ups. I think this is what we're looking at here. I think this whole sequence is one Ash of War. Let me play it again. So keep, keep that in mind, guys. Look at how these attacks flow together. It could be an L1. Don't get me wrong. It could be an L1. It could be L1, L1. And then Ash of War, which that Ash of War is that step into Corvian-like attack. That could be the case, guys. It could be L1, L1, L2, R2. Yes, absolutely, Reef. I think you might be right. Or it could be L2, L2, and then R2. Could it could be one or the two, one of the two. But I think there's a chance. Well, I mean, this one right here is most definitely an Ash of War. Like, there's no doubt that the step into the hit is a Nash of War. There's just no doubt about this one. Like that attack right there into the Corvian. Like this is most likely a Nash of War. Now the question is, I think the most important question out of all of it is not necessarily whether these attacks are a Nash of War or not. It's whether the step dodge is a standalone or if it's like, um, basically, is it more like Bloodhound Fang? Or is it more like the Nas Finesse? Where the Nas Finesse, you can do just the step dodge and not do the follow-up? Or does the follow-up kind of comes with it? Where, with the Bloodhound Fang, like the thing is you do one attack and then you back off. And then you have the chance for follow-up. But with the Nas Finesse, you do a dodge and you're not forced to do anything afterward. You know what I mean? Like the, the Nas Finesse is basically kind of like a standalone dodge. So yeah, so going back here, so, so yeah, I forgot the initial point. So basically what we see here is the character wields uh, two curved swords that look the exact same and he, uh, he wields them paired. And when you, when you think about it, in Elden Ring, the only paired weapons that come in bunch that you have are basically the claws, the fists, basically the small hand weapons. So there's a possibility here that Either we're looking at just, you know, this is a new curved sword. So, you know, they just gave the character two, two of those new curved swords. And he's just, he just happens to have two in his hand. And then he does the, the, the new moveset with them. Or this is like a boss weapon that comes together. Or this is a new class of weapons, which is paired curved sword or like dual curved sword, right? It could be like either one of these. It's not necessarily just, okay, he has one curved sword here, one there, one there, and then this is like a new move that comes with them. I don't know, but 
I think there's a chance that this weapon might actually come paired, but it's not it's not guaranteed. And then to re reinforce that thought, we have another instance here. So basically where I'm getting at is that we're looking at those paired weapons that both have a unique move set, right? So that leads me to believe that they must be coming paired as opposed to as if it was a standalone move set like how do you how do you decide whether your curve sword has your double curve sword has this move set or the new one or because like I'm, I know I'm talking about a lot of things here but basically what I'm trying to say is there's a chance here that those new curved weapon introduce like new power stance moveset basically like let's say if you have this one in the main hand you could have like any curve sword in the off hand and you'd be doing like the dancer move right or in the case of this like this is what i'm leaning toward in the case of this one if you have like let's say this curve sword or whatever like now he has two of them and if you have this one in the main hand then you perform this power stance type attack right that could be a thing. And then the offhand can be like any curve sword because those are part of the normal curve sword class that we have. This is one possibility. The other possibility is that th what we're looking at are both like individual boss weapons that have a unique moveset. But they could be introducing like a new moveset and they could be standalone. Okay. So going back here. Beautiful area here, by the way. Like, I love the color scheme here. Beautiful, like, dreamy blue. But yeah, this is most definitely, like, dancer moveset. Interesting armor. I say interesting, but I don't particularly like it. But here we go, guys. Here it is. The bane of all the Redditors in full display. It's going to be great. It's going to be glorious. The Gravity Lance that's going to do a bazillion damage on every Crouch Poke. They're gonna... They're gonna melt down. They're gonna cry. And we're gonna rejoice. <laughs> no, but for real though, this weapon looks sick. It looks sick. It looks freaking amazing. Some some serious Gravity Lance action going on here. Man, does it look nice. Also, shout out to that boar that also looks pretty badass. And, actually, I didn't think of this, but this is also a human-like character. So, let's try to see if we can get a frame where we can see his armor. Because I have a feeling that we might also be able to play that armor. It's hard to see it, though. But I think this, I think we might be looking at some new armor here as well. I can't be too sure. I don't know, like, I don't see his legs. I, it, like it's, it, it, it's, I'm starting to think it must be like some sort of creature now. Like where are his legs? Are they here? No, they're not. It, it, he has no legs, guys. If he has no legs, then our chances of this being a wearable armor diminishes. So may, maybe we can't wear that. If he has no legs, I don't know. It could still be because... Like, From Software is the type of studio that will reuse every enemy design that they make to reward the player with a set of armor, which is def most definitely good practice, and it makes, like, beating these and, like, farming for armor and, like, finding armors fun because there's a lot of them, and there gives a lot of choice. But, yeah, I, I don't know for sure, but there's still a possibility that this could be a uh, playable armor. Also, shout out to that environment. Kind of looks sick. But yeah. Here, Gravity Lens. Don't know yet, but I'm leaning toward uh, this being Intelligent Strength. I don't know. 
I don't know if it's going to be more of a strength weapon or or an int weapon, but yeah, I'm excited for this one. Well, if this is a wearable element, it's most definitely an Elden Ring element. <laughs> this is great. It's straight from Africa, dude. The most dangerous animal around. Really nice design, though. Dude, look at that hippo. That's crazy. Do you guys see that? He shoots lasers like a porcupine. It's like, uh, it's like Elden Beast all over again. <laughs> They heard people molding about the Elden the Elden Beast beam of light. And so they were like, all right, let's do it again. Let's just just for the memes. I bet that this is like a ro like a roaming boss in the open world. Why do you stand there? Move! <laughs> Move! The dude is just standing there. Fucking IGN players, man. <laughs> He's just dazzled. New 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 in-game screenshots on Twitter posted by Vadi. Alright, so we have the Famitsu interview, the screenshots by Vadi. Let's finish this and then. Okay, here we have some sort of boomerang. Because we've had enemies that shoots, um, you know, we've had those uh, those crystal-looking enemies that shoots like little circles, right? And we never got to play with them. So I don't know. I'm a bit on the fence here. I don't think this is going to be anything playable. But keep in mind, there's always a chance. Really weird-looking enemy. Boss arena, fairly standard. There's something here in the distance that I'm not sure. Oh no, it's just part of the environment. Dude, that poor horse is only on two legs. And then we get we get the monk here. That's having trouble. <laughs> the monk is having trouble. Wait a second. Um, can we get a good look? Yeah, we can. We can get a good look here. Uh, at this new shield. I don't think there's much. Uh, Genius, thank you so much for the bits. Really appreciate, man. I don't think there is much to talk about here. Because this is the uh, cin cinematic before a boss fight. I'm sure it's going to be an interesting boss, but there's nothing here that we have to speculate about. But here, though, we can speculate about that shield. That, <laughs> that twin blade shield with a twin blade. And by the way, that twin blade right here is the twin blade uh, right... I can find it right here. This is the twin blade from this boss or this monster or this mob. This is the same twin blade that we can wield and we see our character wielding right here. This is the same twin blade. So again, just further proof that a lot of these boss weapons are playable. Seiji, thank you so much for the 20 gifted subs, man. Thank you so much, Seiji. I really appreciate. The monk is on a painting with a woman in the trailer. Dude, we have some, some amazing lore insight. Thanks. So I think uh, this is the shot you are speaking of. If I can find it, there you go. So you're saying that this, this creepy old fella... is this one right 
here. I mean, yeah. It looks like it. Probably. Genius subs. Holy shit, genius. Thanks for the 40 gifted subs. Dude, you guys are so generous. I'm not even seeing everything. Oh my god. Thank you so much, genius. Genius and Seiji. Thank you, guys. Sorry, genius. I didn't see it, but thank you so, so much, man. Oh my god. Thank you so much, guys. All right, all right. Sorry, guys. I'm going to try to hurry up with this, and then we're going to see uh, what's up with Twitter. But yeah, take a look at this shield. It's really interesting that this shield is reminiscent of a twin blade and that he has a twin blade on one hand. And we also get a sequence where the character uses the shield to attack. Uh, I don't know if it's in this clip or if it's in another one. But I, from what I saw, if I remember correctly, it actually does look like a normal shield attack. But I need to, re to see it again. Okay, so we get the dodge here, whatever. So what I'm looking at, what I'm looking for is the sequence where the character uses the shield. Well, I mean, it's most definitely a unique Ash of War there. Well, he was definitely attacking with that shield, but he got grabbed. Okay, so this is, okay, so this is most definitely a new attack, right? Dude, because it looks very similar. Guys, if you do... Guys, if you do, like, a heavy attack with a great shield, it actually looks exactly like that. Yeah, that's just a great shield R2, I believe. Like, it looks like this weapon has a move... Or this shield has a move set. But I don't know. Like, I feel like... I don't know if it's because of the camera work that it feels like he lunges forward more. Like, it seems like he lunges forward more, though. That's the thing. It's very hard, very hard to tell from this if this is the the good old Great Shield R2 or if this is, like, some sort of modification of the Great Shield R2 because it does look like the character lunges forward way more than the default Great Shield R2. So, yeah, very interesting. There's definitely something here going on with that Great Shield. I don't think it's just a Great Shield. I think it most definitely has, like, a unique attack. I think that Great Shield R2 is special. Kind of, yeah, people said kind of like Pursing Fang. Yeah, I know he's poking, guys. <laughs> we know he's poking, but... Like, this is very just reminiscent of the Great Shield R2, but... Yeah, I think he lunges forward way more. So this is a different animation, ultimately. Basically a new attack. Dude. Right guard giving no fucks. Ooh. You guys see that, though? I mean, keep in mind... Boss armor and boss weapons. If we can wield that, take a look at the next attack that the boss does with his weapon. Just take a look. It's coming soon. Check this out. Oh my god. You know what this reminds me of? Freaking... Um, gar uh, not Gargoyle Spear, but the Ring the ring Spear in Dark Souls 3. Remember the Ring Spear? It was a great moveset. That looks very similar to it, to, to it with new special effects. Yeah, the Ring Spear, guys. That looks like the, the Ring Spear. Yeah, Ring Knight Spear, sorry. From Dark Souls 3. Very similar moveset. With that, that swipe. I like that. I think this might be it. This might be like a new Great Spear too. That looks pretty long too. Imagine if you could dual wield it. <laughs> but yeah, if we can wield that Great Spear. Dude, that's gonna be brutal, man. These new Great Spears goodies, man. Oh my god, this is gonna be amazing. I'm going to be honest, though. This looks like a very long weapon. So if this is a great spear, it could be really strong. Could be really strong just from the length of the weapon. Like, uh, for comparison. 
the great the gravity great spear here looks absolutely like right here looks absolutely badass but when we get like the full shot i know it's at a like you know it's it's not like a like a, a straight perspective like we're looking at it from we're looking at it uh, like up in an upward direction so it's like tilted and whatever but it does not look that long right as opposed to when you compare it to the great spear here uh maybe okay I think I, yeah, I missed a shot. One sec, guys, it's coming, it's coming. So if you compare it, oh my god, <laughs> when when does does he get grabbed? Well, anyway, I think there's a good frame here. If you compare it to the length of this one, like this is one hell of a long great spear. I know it's a boss wielding it, so obviously it's scaled to the boss, but in proportion, it feels very long. So I do think that this is going to be a great spear type weapon that we're going to wield. And dude, with the Ash of War, that's like this big explosion. Oh man, I think there's a very high chance that this weapon is going to be playable. And that the Ash of War is going to be like something similar and maybe like smaller scale, maybe like smaller AoE, but it's like you plunge like that. Yeah, I, I think I think that's a new weapon too. It looks badass, man. Also, shout out to the uh if we get this armor as playable, I actually really like the the helmet here. It's a cool looking helmet. Still a bit on the weird side, obviously, because Elden Ring, but... Oh, okay, this was the part here, right there. Okay. Yeah, you really see, like, you really see the length of that Great Spear, man. Like, in proportion, uh, like, this might be, like, just a bit shorter to Moog. Just from the looks of it. Like, by proportion. But yeah, that big swipe. So basically, guys, if you have not played Dark Souls 3, uh, what was special is that this weapon has a similar moveset to a weapon that From Software has pre previously done, which was called the Ring Knight Spear. And that weapon extended its length with various attacks. So basically, like the weapon had a set length, but then it did some fire attacks that extended its range even further for these specific attacks, namely a running attack. But here we kind of see like the same idea on display with that swipe so like that swipe extend it looks like it extends the range a little bit it's hard to say because of the perspective but uh it could be it's a possibility again like like i said like we're talking about possibility we're speculating this is all just for fun like we're not taking anything here for granted we're just talking because we like to talk about these things and we're excited to uh to get our hands on the dlc but yeah, <laughs> this is the one Nash, <laughs> Nash kind of roasted earlier. Uh, we get the uh, the Crucible Knight uh, type of uh, of attack right there. I wonder if this is the Ash of War from. Um, it looks like it's the Ash of War from the the Twin Blade and not the Shield though. Yeah, it looks like it's the. Well, I don't know anymore. Yeah, it's the Twin Blade, right? He's cranking the Twin Blade attack, not the shield. He's just holding the shield. Yeah, I think it's the Twin Blade attack. So this is basically like the Twin Blade, probably like a unique Twin Blade, and this is its unique Ash of War, I assume. And it's probably going to scale with Fate or something like that. You think it will be a halberd or a normal spear? Yeah, it could be for the boss weapon. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it does go really high up. I wonder if you can dodge. Like, can you imagine if, um, like, let's say you get attack, and then instead of rolling, you just do that Ash of War because it just swings you <laughs> like completely away midair, and to not get backstabbed, like, instead of like attacking back you just turn around and just attack the fucking floor like back there or whatever 
Cause, because like let's say this would probably be easy to backstab right so like let's let's just a bit, a hypothetical like scenario you get attacked instead of rolling away to get out of it you do that ash so you just fucking go flying and then instead of attacking back because you'd likely get roll backstabbed afterward you just swing like completely away and just <laughs> get away scot-free i could see like a use case for this just like speculating about it but yeah All right. Okay, we got a few more shots, but I think that's that's close to being it. We're going to take a look at the screenshots. We're going to take a look at the Famitsu interview in a second. Just uh, finishing the trailer here. Just making sure we don't miss anything. That looks like uh, Michelangelo. Looks like Mikula. Yeah. Yeah, really, really badass here with... Uh, I really like the darker fantasy that this trailer has. Like, um, you know Elden Ring with Limgrave and everything? It was more uh, in the team of like high, high fantasy and From Software really excels at dark fantasy. And this is more dark fantasy, like the mood, everything. This just screams dark fantasy. And just to mention again, look at all these castles, guys. So many castles. The castles are the best. They're the best. They're the best place to play both PVE and PvP. Okay, let's find. Um... Also, actually, let's just make sure we get the date right, just for the record for people who came in. By the way, I heard that the, like, legitimately, like, a few minutes after the DLC came out, apparently they sold out the Collector's Edition, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. <laughs> uh, do we get the date? There you go. Date, 21st of June, I believe. Yeah, 21st of June. 21st of June... It's still in the ballpark of what we were expecting. Personally, I was expecting more April and May, but June was still in the possibilities, so they're opting for further away. So, which means that they're probably going to have more than enough time to polish this thing up, get a really good release. All right, Twitter. Elden Ring. Oh, you had, wait, you guys said Vadi, right? Never mind. Let's take a look at Vadi's Twitter. Okay, so they posted the trailer. Uh, screenshots? Nope. Okay. So. Uh, dude. Fucking brain fart. Uh, just, I don't know. I don't know what Vadi's Twitter name is. Okay, there you go. Like that. Okay. Um, no, that's Armored Core. Wait, who said that there was screenshots on Vadi's Twitter? Go down here. Oh, it's like not in the right order. What the hell? Uh, dude, this is so inconvenient. It's not even in the right order. Dude, this is inconvenient. There's all the image on the Reddit thread. Uh, fuck, dude. Problem with Reddit is that my computer is on a VPN right now, so I don't have access to Reddit. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at the new interview. Uh, we're going to find these pictures, though. There you go. 
a short interview with me, Hidetaka Miyazaki. The game's keyword, freedom, refers to the fire. Uh, Edom of the capture, story progression, tactics, and character building. Okay. Um... All right, one second, was let me copy that link over so I can transfer it to myself on the PC. So I'm grabbing that from the laptop. Okay, I think Ongon sent it to me. All right, one sec, I'm gonna download it actually. I don't know, it's gonna take longer. Okay, there you go, I got a link from uh, from Res. One second, guys. We are gathering. We are gathering the goodies. We are gathering the good stuff. There you go. There you go. Would you look at that? Okay. All right. So that's one. So we get to take a look at the new axe and uh, uh, a better um, a better shot. These these knights from earlier or Vikings from earlier as well. Nice boots though. And then obviously, so this is going to be a new spell, I assume. Some thorns coming out of the back. Very interesting. Uh, one sec here. Some dead blight thorns? Oh, dude, you think it's going to be dead blight? I mean, it could be. It really could. Oh my god, we did not see that enemy in the trailer. <laughs> Look at this face! Oh my god, guys. Oh, uh, we can't we can't zoom the image actually. Oh well. That guy is looking funny, but I I like the design though. Okay, let's see what else. Ooh, ooh, new spear right here. New spear. So we get to take a look at the. Uh, the, these same Viking-like enemies that we thought they had a new spear, but it was too hard to tell earlier in uh, in the trailer shot. But we most definitely see it here. Yep. Really nice. Nice to see th that new spear. Also, what is this weapon? What is that? You guys see that, right? It's very small. Um, that looks like some sort of big mace, like some new hammer of some sort. Very interesting. And obviously there's big boy here. See the beautiful skybox too, holy shit. Really beautiful. Yeah, I'm interested in that weapon. We get to see two new weapons here, so really nice. Okay, do we get anything here aside from the beautiful environment? We get a better look at some of these structures. But I don't think in terms of... Dude, is it me or the... Oh, never mind. I was about to say the legs seem kind of weird, but it's just me. Yeah, I don't think there's anything as like special here. This is an artwork, yeah, I know, but these artwork are we're not gonna showcase stuff that that's not like um that's not in the game. Okay, um, Famitsu, Famitsu, Famitsu. Translation. Uh, fuck. Why is it always Reddit? Okay. 
Hmm. Reset error. Uh, maybe. What the fuck is that? There's way more new screenshot. Okay, let me actually check my Discord. I'm sure you guys sent it to me. Let's see. Um... Fuck you, dude. This fucking shit. Alright, um... Dude, I think we might be able to just get them here. <laughs> Try Earl Gamer. Alright. No, you cannot send the link here. Um... CK, send me the link you sent them on Discord. All right. Thanks, Moaz. All right. Thank you, Moaz. All right. Um... There you go. We got it. All right. Boom. So that's one. So this is most definitely our our key our uh, our feet weapon again. So we get a, a a nice look at our feet weapon move set. Really nice. And same uh, same barbarian viking enemies. It's on YouTube. You just check 10 minute interview. All right, we're going to check out those screenshots and then we're jumping in the interview. Okay, really nice. Uh, what about this armor, though? Is it new? Dude, I think that's another new armor. Is Yeah, I think so. I think both armors are new. Well, this one we've seen earlier, but this one I don't think so. It looks different from... Uh... Man, one sec here. Guys, one sec here. It's important. Remember our speculation about... Remember our speculation about the uh, the necklace. Doing too fast though. Where is it? Okay, right here. Dude. Dude. Okay, guys, check this out. I'm thinking... Okay, so he, here's my thought process. I'm thinking... I'm looking at this here, right? And then I'm looking at this here, and I'm thinking... This looks... Like the same armor. We can agree with that. Or... I mean, it might maybe it's not the same. But... It most definitely looks the same, right? Okay, so here, here's the crazy part. You see that? See that right here? That's a necklace. See that right here? There's no necklace here. Dude, I have shivers, man. Our speculation earlier, we were talking about those two slots. We were talking about those two slots. Like, we were asking, do you guys really think... That this menu in Elden Ring is going to stay empty here forever. 
And keep in mind, like, Dark Souls 3 had a Covenant slot there, so... Like, guys, I believe... I believe that this right here is this here that we don't have here, but that we have right there. I think I think this I think we just found like some evidence or something something that leads us to believe that we're gonna have a new um a new necklace slot here, whether it be for covenant or it's an item like talisman. I think we have our new necklace slot. Still a theory. It's not confirmed or anything, but it's a strong clue, I believe. I believe this is a strong clue. Look at that. Like the whole set, whoops. The whole set right here is on full display. And obviously, obviously the like, you take a look at the character. Looks nice and all. Obviously, it's not the same as this one, because this one is not wearing the hat. But why doesn't he have the necklace as well? Right? Why not? Hmm? Think about it. Alright, let me bring up the other screenshot. Okay. Right here. Boom. Take a look at that. Dude. <laughs> that's a... Um, I'm thinking this is either like a dead blight or a madness enemy. Like I'm thinking of like these... Uh, these levels in Bloodborne where you had like frenzy. If you had like a line of sight. With like the castle in the back. Like I'm thinking that maybe if you look at these guys your frenzy is going to build up. Or maybe even your dead blight is going to build up just looking at them. That's what I'm thinking looking at this guy. I think that's the only thing we can really speculate about here in this shot. It has a dead blight gra grab attack 100%. Yeah. Just get sucked in. And you become part of his brain. Right, let me grab another screenshot. Boom. Uh, what do we have here? Uh, I don't think there is much to talk about. Like, actually, there is something to talk about, guys. Did you notice how much more dense the vegetation is compared to everywhere else in Elden Ring? Look at that. There is no area in Elden Ring that has such condensed, like, vegetation. Like, the closest thing we got is Limgrave. And, for instance, Limgrave doesn't have, like, trees, like, grouped up like that so close. That AC6 optimization? I mean, I don't know, but I am I think so, a little bit. I mean, enough so that they're clearly, clearly here, they're able to put more stuff on screen that they were able to in the base game. Like, this is way more dense than we're used to. In the base game, like for sure, no doubt about that. There's some enemies on the left. I don't know, I don't see them. Some enemies on the left. Dude, am I tripping? I don't see anything. Looks like roots. I mean, they are roots. I don't see any enemy. It's just trees. Okay, he's tripping. All right. But yeah, I yeah, I love it, dude. Like density like that, that's great. That is great, dude. I'm really looking forward to like playing in maps that are even more beautiful. Is it that is it that lost? <laughs> I know, right? All right, next screenshot. Uh right here. Where is it? Next screenshot. Come on. Okay. 
open in browser. Yeah, this one, I don't think there's much to talk about here because we've had we had a similar shot to this in the trailer. I, it might even be a frame of the trailer. I mean, it looks cool, don't get me wrong, but uh, there's not much to speculate about here. For me, at least. Looks like uh, maybe a tower for, for a rune here, but that's about it. Nice teeth, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> he has those set of clean teeth that he uses to, uh, to heat at the table. And then when he gets served dog food, he uses these ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Um, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at... Uh, Elden Ring interview Miyazaki. One hour ago by Eurogamer. All right. Let's take a look here. New interview, fellas. Brand new interview. Fresh. Tasty. I'm Zoe Delhunty Light, and I have a feast, nay, a banquet for you today, as we at Eurogamer got an exclusive interview with Hidetaka Miyazaki of FromSoft. We got the chance to pick his brains about the new Elden Ring DLC, Shadow of the Erd Tree, and the Bloodborne remaster we're all craving. FromSoft boss Hidetaki Miyazaki told our deputy news editor, Ed Nightingale, that this is the biggest expansion the company has ever worked on. Okay. Just from the trailer, as many suspected. Sorry, I'm going to pause it here. So biggest, I'm going to repeat, biggest expansion that From Software has ever done. I mean, that does say a lot. It's, those are not empty words. What we've seen here, this is going to be huge. Bloodborne, <laughs> Bloodborne Remastered. What did she say? At night, Miyazaki of... Wait, 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 let's restart. I'm Zoe Dilhunty Light, and I have a feast, nay, a banquet for you today, as we at Eurogamer got an exclusive interview with Hidetaka Miyazaki of FromSoft. We got the chance to pick his brains about the new Elden Ring DLC, Shadow of the Erd Tree, and the Bloodborne remaster we're all craving. Whoa! Okay, what the hell? Holy smokes, we just learned that there's a Bloodborne remaster. Remember, I told you guys, it's not a matter of if... It's a fucking matter of when. I told you. I fucking Erdtree told and you. The Bloodborne remaster we're all craving. FromSoft boss Hidetaki Miyazaki told our deputy news editor, Ed Nightingale, that this is the biggest expansion the company has ever worked on. Judging from the trailer, as many suspected, Shadow of the Erd Tree will follow the story of Mikola, Melania's brother. There's also mention of the Realm of Shadow accessed through Mikola's withered arm that Mog was guarding, perhaps hinting at the new area we'll all be exploring. Further, we see a variety of new environments, haunted grasslands, fiery caverns, mystical ruins, as well as some magnificently terrifying new bosses. Let's get started with the interview, shall we? If you're wondering, Miyazaki confirmed to us that Game of Thrones author George R. R. Martin has not provided fresh material. As for George's involvement... Why does she even mention that? Why do they even ask that? It's so obvious, the guy wrote the lore, like you can't lo write the lore for the DLC or like write the lore twice. Of course he has not participated for the DLC. That doesn't even make sense. God, these journalists, man. Wondering, Miyazaki confirmed to us that Game of Thrones author George R. R. Martin has not provided fresh material. As for George's involvement, essentially it is the same as it was with the base game, said Miyazaki. The DLC Shadow of the Erd Tree is based on one part of that original mythos that he penned for us. It's not a brand new mythos that he's written specifically for Shadow of the Earth Tree. Guys, it's not about who cares about him. That's not what's, what it's about. It's that uh, 
like you have to understand what George R. R. Martin did for Elden Ring. He wrote the mythos, which is basically like the template for the world building and the lore, and kind of like what grounds the entire story and everything. But he didn't write the story itself. So basically, once the lore and the mythos and the like the whole background is like is worked on is ready like there's not another one to write a new when you make the dlc like it's not a new project it this it's the same lore it's the same mythos it's the same game so there's no like logic for george rr George martin to write something new for that unless he starts working to make the story which is not what what happened with elden ring so just to give you guys an explanation it's not about who cares it's just that it's a weird question to ask on one part of that original mythos that he penned for us it's not a brand new mythos that he's written specifically for shadow of the earth tree he has not created something new which informed the design of the dlc it's simply another part of the original story that we thought fit to tell as a new expansion so what can we expect from shadow of the earth tree Compared with previous games, Miyazaki said this DLC is our largest expansion to date in terms of overall volume. Miyazaki told us that, in terms of where the game takes place, it's a brand new area of a brand new map which includes a structure similar to what you find in the base game with field areas, legacy dungeons and other dungeons of various scale. The map is going to be huge. In Miyazaki's words, in terms of pure surface area, you're going to be faced with something larger even than Limgrave in the base game. From wait, Soft has an awesome base game with field areas, legacy volume. Miyazaki told us that, in terms of where the game takes place, it's a brand new area of a brand new map which includes a structure similar to what you find in the base game with field areas, legacy dungeons and other dungeons of various scale. The map is going to be huge. In Miyazaki's words, in terms of pure surface area, you're going to be faced with something larger even than Limgrave in the base game. Okay. Honestly, guys, it's not that impressive, if I'm going to be honest. Like, we're looking at a little bit bigger than Limgrave. But it's likely not going to be empty, though. And keep in mind, surface area is not a great metric and also keep also keep in mind that a big part of the feedback from the player base in general and i'm not talking about like pvpers but a big part of the feedback was a lot of people complained that they prefer more linear and they didn't like that elden ring was so empty this was a huge thing that was going around uh when elden ring came out and that was like a big criticism so bigger doesn't does not mean better and it's possible that for the DLC, instead of spreading the map, they pretty much packed more content into Limgrave. Base map is what, like five Limgrave? Yeah, about that. Which is still very big, but especially if they crammed even like, basically, Lim Limgrave doesn't really feel that empty. Like it depends where, but in some places it does. But I think it could be, instead of, like, um, looking at it as in, well, you know, if it's just, like, a little bit bigger than Limgrave, like, it's not that big. Instead of looking at it this way, I would look at it more in, like, okay, so it's a little bit bigger than Limgrave, but I have a feeling that that is the case because, you know, they're prob they probably tried to pack more things into something that's more fun, more compact, and that's more in line with what the feedback was. Maybe that's just coping. I don't know. But I have a feeling that it's going to be less empty. I don't know. I Also, like, keep in mind, guys, from software, as always, and I mean always, done good DLCs. From software, to this day, has never done a bad DLC or a DLC that was worse than their main game. So, I'm just saying... Including Limgrave North and South, though. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Limgrave is small. That's not what I'm saying. I I'm just saying that there there's a chance it could be more compact. Castle, thanks for the resub for 24, mo 34 months, dude. Really appreciate Yeah, it was a good trailer. 
Okay, let's keep going, guys. FromSoft has also developed its approach to field design. Concerning the world, Miyazaki told us that while the overall structure is the same, while we have these open field areas, we have the legacy dungeon areas, and the general divide between these areas is quite distinct. This time, we wanted to go more in depth, he said, and bring Ooh. a more dense and richer level design, which brings these types of layout together a little more seamlessly. So, there won't be, hopefully, as distinct a divide between these areas this time. There, of course, will be large open areas. There, of course, will be legacy dungeons. But we've also experimented with something a little more in between these as well, to bring up more diverse gameplay experiences. You, you know what I think this means? I think this means exactly what we were talking about when when we noticed in that big screenshot that there was so many structures i think this is what it refers to i think what they're trying to do here is instead of making a big empty open world i think they're trying to make it so that the player has more stuff to care about in between so more structures yeah this is actually fantastic news dude i mean this is not confirmed like word for word technically but what it sounds like, if we try to interpret this in the the like the mo more lo the most logical way possible, is I believe that this new map design is made in a way where you always have something to like to go to, but it's still open world. So that's why Miyazaki calls calls this like an in between because it's not technically like a a dungeon or a legacy dungeon. Like you're not like in like a, a a world that's more like linear like the you know like the you know the legacy dungeons that you played in but you're still you're not in a like big open space like this opening shot this is like a big empty open space you're gonna be like in between like oh the, there's like an interesting church there and like not far behind like there's a camp and like we get that in the base game but in the base game they're very spread out so I believe that what she what she's referring to, or what Miyazaki is referring to, is they probably try to cram stuff closer together. I think it all makes sense, honestly. It all makes sense. Uh, what happened there? Oh, there it is. Further, they'll be open to bring up also ex open areas there. There is this time there. So there won't be, hopefully, as distinct a divide between these areas this time there. Of course, will be large open areas there. Of course, will be legacy dungeons. But we've also experimented with something a little more in between these as well, to bring up more diverse gameplay experiences. Further, there'll be over... I think it's pretty clear, right, guys? What do you guys think? I think it's pretty clear. I think it's pretty clear the way, the, the way it's phrased. I think it makes sense. Dungeons. But we've also experimented with something a little more in between these as well, to bring up more diverse gameplay experiences. Further, there'll be over 10 new boss fights, plus plenty of new weapons, new equipment, and new skills to find. 10 new boss fights. 10 new boss fights. 10 new boss fights. Guys, is that, is that big or not? Yes, it's big, dude. Okay, so I'm trying to think. So in Ring City, we got three. No, we had four. Bloodborne DLC had four. Yeah, 10 is big, actually. Yeah, you guys are right. Like, I was trying to think, like, uh, there's a lot of boss in the game. Like, I don't know how many, but it's a DLC. Like, how many boss do we get per DLC? Usually, usually it's... We had two boss, I think. Did we have two or three boss in the Ash of Ariandel DLC? No, we had Sister Freed. We had the wolf thing. Did we have something else? How many boss did we get in the Ash DLC? Two? Okay. And then we got Medir, uh, Gale in Ring City, uh, the PvP boss. What else did we get in the Ring City? 
Midir Gare, Gale, the PvP boss. I think that's it, right? Oh, the Twin Demons. Yeah, I can't forget the Twin Demons. Okay, there you go. So, we got six boss in all the Dark Souls 3 DLC. And then in this big Elden Ring package, we get more boss than all the DLC that Dark Souls 3 had. Okay. So, I think that gives us a good idea. That's really nice. Give new weapons. There'll be over 10 new boss fights, plus plenty of new weapons, new equipment, and new skills to find. And eight weapons. There'll be over 10 new boss fights. Okay, over 10. Well, over 10 usually means between 10 and 15. So that's good. That's good, dude. Fights, plus plenty of new weapons, new equipment, and new skills to find. And eight new weapon categories have been added to a Whoa! Whoa! You cannot be dropping bombs like this. What the fuck, dude? Oh my god, dude. Eight is huge. Eight is fucking massive, man. What the fuck? And eight new weapon categories have been added. Categories, not new weapons, guys. Eight new categories. New categories, like... What the fuck, dude? That's insane. The mega, mega, mega... So, <laughs> so you had the colossal. Now you have the mega colossal. And then you have the mega, mega colossal. And then you have the mega, 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 mega colossal. <laughs> well, the feet weapons are definitely its own weapon class. Okay, that's one. I'm starting to think that these uh, curved swords that we saw, uh, I, I'm starting to think that because they said eight new weapon class, like we can't start inventing like weapon class that we didn't see there. I'm starting to think that twin uh, curved sword are a weapon class of its own. Because she said that, I think it would make sense. And then uh, I think the shield with the spike is might be its own weapon class. Um... The, the twin blade type shield. Whoop, not this one. Where is it? I mean, you guys know what I'm talking about. There you go, right here. This might be its own class as well. Twin everything, actually. Uh, yeah, that could be a thing. Maybe like twin, twin a lot of things. Yeah, they might be adding uh, new weapons in, in form of twins like that. Twin lenses. <laughs> Triple lens. Yeah, that's that's a possibility. Alright, let's keep going. But dude, 8 weapon class, man. 10 new boss fights, plus plenty of new weapons, new equipment, and new skills to find. And 8 new weapon categories have been added to account for the new weapon types, which begs the question, what could they possibly be? Anyway, well, I mean, we have a good idea. DLC began to form around the end. We have a good idea of what these weapons are going to be from the DLC. I think we're going. I think the the reason why there's so many new classes is because they decided to give like, like they couldn't. They wanted to make like twin weapons, but. Like, um, they wanted to give them, like, unique movesets. Imagine all the new power stance. Yeah, pretty much. It's like new power stance, I imagine. But yeah, anyway, let's keep going. Anyway, ideas for the DLC began to form around the end of Elden Ring's development, as there were remaining ideas that were clearly not going to fit in and would make more sense as DLC. Development then began around the time updates and patches for the base game had begun to settle down. Expansions for previous FromSoft games are notorious for upping the difficulty. Bloodborne's The Old Hunters especially. When we asked about the difficulty spike in light of The Old Hunters, Miyazaki stated that in terms of raw power meters and difficulty level, you could say Shadow of the Erdtree is on a similar footing with the end game of Elden Ring. As to our general approach to the level of challenge, this has not changed from how we approached. <laughs> 
<laughs> you fucking journalist, man. I love how they talk about difficulty and then the next fucking frame. In the next the fucking frame, just look at the background footage, guys. Pew pew from the fucking spirit ash. Like... This boss is a really nice and challenging boss, and the cheese here is just so fucking smelly that I can't fucking, I can't not be bothered by it. This has not changed. Like, <laughs> what a meme, dude. Fucking meme. This has not changed from how we approached the base game. How to, a new element of guys, how to not play the game. Just fucking be like a like a game journalist. Similar footing with the end game of Elden Ring. As to our general approach to the level of challenge, this has not changed from how we approached the base game. A new element of progression unique to this DLC area has also been implemented, which further heightens player freedom to walk away, level up, and come back later. Though the general approach to the level of the challenge has not changed one bit. Miyazaki explained that. We wanted to provide these challenging encounters and these menacing threats. And in order to do that, we wanted to give the player a lot of freedom of approach. I think you know, what they're talking about, though, for the level of difficulty is really nice because... Um, because I think the end game difficulty for bosses is... I think is in a good place. I don't think the end game bosses are too easy. In fact, like, Mogwin is a really fun boss, one of my favorite. Millennia, not necessarily my favorite, but the challenge is there. Uh, what else is there for late boss? Oh, Radagon is my favorite boss in the game. I love the Radagon fight. Elden Beast is kind of boring, but Radagon is so nice. So if we get more bosses in the same vein as like Radagon and like uh, Mogwin, oh man, that's going to be great. We wanted them to feel free about how they chose and when they chose to approach and tackle these hardships. And I think Melania was one major example in the base game. She is an extremely tough boss battle, but she's also optional. So players who look for that sort of challenge in our games will find a challenge on equal footing in the DLC as well. On the challenge from Soft Games Provide and the challenge Shadow of the Earth Tree will definitely subject us to, Miyazaki explained how the FromSoft game's famous difficulty level has a much deeper meaning to him than simply hard, famous difficulty level Guys, us to. am I crazy or the footage we're looking at? Dude, what is this footage we're looking at? Guys, games I'm just gonna call out Eurogamer for being fucking shameless and putting network test footage like fucking two years after release, the fucking dumbasses. You fucking morons. You can't be bothered to even fucking play the game and you do these interviews. Your B-roll footage is network test. I am so fucking done. And I can't, for those wondering, I can tell because the HUD is the first version of the HUD that we had in the network test. This is actually insane. This is shameless is what it is. This is absolutely shameless. What the fuck, dude? Footing in the DLC as well. I the hate... You know why I hate that? Because, like, I love these games, right? I love these games. I would not be very good to do an interview. Like, I would not be as skilled as Eurogamer, for instance. But there's a lot of third-party uh, channels out there that not only would they, would they be way more skilled at doing this, these interviews, but they actually also do care about the game. Unlike Eurogamer, who just fucking puts network test footage in their fucking two year, like I, it's whatever. It's fucking crazy. Challenge from Soft Games provides. It's insulting for someone who cares about this game. It's kind of insulting. Equal footing in the DLC as well. On the challenge from Soft Games provide, and the challenge Shadow of the Earth Tree will definitely subject us to. Miyazaki explained how the FromSoft game's famous difficulty level has a much deeper meaning to him than simply hard for hard's sake. I think as a theme that those elements of hardship and that feeling of accomplishment simply has value as an experience, he said. As a player and as a person... You must watch the original interview, text not vid, there's more details. Yeah, yeah, don't worry guys, don't worry. In due time. We're, we're, we're like like I said, we're in no rush. We're gonna be here for a while. 
We're going to look at every piece of content that we need to. Don't worry about it. Person, no rush. I think this is not something that can be easily achieved or replicated in our lives. And I think it's something... So basically the reason why why we're watching this even though like this is not a particularly good interview is that we still get bombshells of information regardless and maybe a lot of this information will also be in the Japanese interview but if there's a chance that there is some new information in there we don't want to miss it so that's just it's just that simple thing that carries with it inherent risk in other media, especially, it's difficult to replicate that hardship and accomplishment. And I think that therein is the appeal and the value of FromSoft games. Of course, it can be felt in parts of other media, but in terms of that risk and reward and that sense of accomplishment that you feel with the act of play, I think that's very unique to games, and I think it's very powerful. And, of course, we just had to ask Miyazaki if Shadow of the Erdtree will again include a poison swamp. In a word, yes, he said. But this was actually a point of introspection for me after creating the base game. It was only after creating it that I realised I really like to create poison swamps. And this was a little place of introspection and reflection for me, so maybe when players reach the poison swamp in the DLC, they too will feel a little bit of this retrospection. Shadow of the Earth Tree will be released across all platforms on the 21st of June, but before you go, Miyazaki did have something to say about the Bloodborne remake we are all gagging for. Oh shit. Miyazaki discussed with us the possibility of a Bloodborne remake and the oh, benefits shit. of waiting for new hardware on which to review tea of a Bloodborne for. Miyazaki discussed with us the possibility of a Bloodborne remake and the benefits of waiting for new hardware on which to revisit the beloved PlayStation 4 classic. It is a title we hold very dear just as much as our fans, Miyazaki told Eurogamer when questioned about the possibility of a Bloodborne remake. It does make me very happy to see that there are still so many people passionate about it. But would a remake benefit from newer hardware to make the release worthwhile? From Software's Demon's Souls, for example, was remade as a PS5 launch title after originally launching on PS. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, again, bad journalist does not understand it's, it's the content that he, that she's talking about. The reason why Demon Souls remake did not sell that well, despite being technically, uh, you know, a, a very very well executed on a technical level, is for a simple reason. One, I mean, f a few simple reasons. One. No one had a fucking PS5 when the game launched at launch with the console, so no one could buy it in comparison. There was just not much potential for buyers. It was a PS5 exclusive on top of that. So that's one. Two, Demon's Souls is extremely, and I mean extremely dated. I know people like to reminisce about nostalgia from older games, but let me tell you, the Demon Souls remake, I had not played the first Demon Souls, but the Demon Souls remake was one of the worst PvE game I have ever played. And it's not because the remake was badly executed. I would have felt the exact same way about Demon Souls if I played it now. And the reason is simple, it's not because it's a bad game. It's just that after you've played Elden Ring, af or sorry, after you've played um, Dark Souls 3, uh, playing Elden Ring, playing uh, freaking Dark Souls 2, Dark Souls 1, you cannot go back to the first iteration of what has been improved upon so much. Like the PvE, the AI, everything was so dated. It, sh it just was painful to play, honestly. And that is not on From Software because From Software did not make the Demon Souls remake. This is not on From Software. People keep talking about From Software linking the Demon Souls remake. It's not even their, like it's not even their decision. The oh, the IP is Sony's IP, and the remake was not made by From Soft. And the reason why it was not received as well, partly in my opinion, is because it was too dated, and the developers, or I should not say the dev, because the devs did a good job. It's the leadership of uh, Blue Point Studio who made the remake the leadership was too much of a too too coward to make uh, decisions that would change a little bit of how the game was played so basically they were too chicken to adapt the AI for basically you know 
uh, new standards which are a little bit better AI so what it felt like is like you got to the boss battles and the boss battles were dumb easy because the AI is was the AI that was made like 10 years ago or whatever so it basically felt like shit because they remade a dated game without improving the systems that were dated so with that being said now that you compare Bloodborne, you can't be comparing Bloodborne to fucking Demon Souls. Like, Bloodborne is still, like, way up to date. You can play Bloodborne today, and the only thing keeping Bloodborne away from people playing it is the 30 FPS. It's, it's that simple. Like, Bloodborne is not nearly, nearly, like, it doesn't feel as dated as Demon Souls. Like, there's no fucking way. Like, the only thing keeping Bloodborne away is that 30 FPS. Like, it's just crazy to think otherwise, let's be Three. honest. A double console generation leap that meant the re-release felt more significant. I think having new hardware is definitely a part of what gives these remakes value, Miyazaki said. Things you weren't able to achieve on previous generations of hardware, ways you weren't able to render specific expressions, new hardware sometimes makes it possible. However, I wouldn't say that's the be-all and end-all, Miyazaki continued. I think purely from a user perspective, modern hardware also allows more players to appreciate all the games. And so, it ends up being a simple reason, but as a fellow player, I think that accessibility is important. I think that can be the driving force between bringing an old game to a new platform. Whether a Bloodborne remake eventually sees the light of day, regardless of whether it may arrive on either PS5 or PS6, Miyazaki said he was very happy to see so many passionate fans calling for a Bloodborne remake to happen. Miyazaki apologised for being unable to say anything more specific about remaking the PS4 exclusive, but said he was thrilled at the game's continued response. Put simply, it makes me very happy to see because it's a title with a lot of specific memories, both for me and the staff who worked on it, he said. And when we see those passionate voices in the community, of course it makes us feel thrilled. It makes us feel very fortunate to have that and to have those memories. FromSoft does carefully consider what it wants to make, so if a Bloodborne remake is on the cards, it sounds like they feel no pressure to add anything that may mimic features in other titles. Yeah, you guys are right. Like, this is just... God, man, this is some garbage. Holy shit. This is like, um... It feels like a lot of these things are trying, like, <laughs> typical fucking media, man, trying to push you to think in one way, like, thinking that they're working on the Bloodborne when they fucking didn't, like, they didn't say they were. Ah, uh, man, sorry. All right, let's, uh, uh, let's take a look at the Fami... Do... Uh... Okay. Well, IGN also got it, so... Famitsu, there it is. There it is, there it is. Boom. There you go. It's right here. A short interview with Miyazaki. The game's keyword... Okay, so we read that. Uh, okay, the long-awaited dark, fanta dark fantasy action RPG Elden Ring is finally less than a month before its release. February 25th. Wait, is this... Dude, that's fucking 2022. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? Um, game manga Elden Ring on the road. Is that it? No. It's Japanese only? Okay. Um. One sec. There you go. Fucking finally. No, nope, that's not it. Same fucking garbage. Um, fuck, dude. Jesus Christ. Mm. 
Okay, let me check this board. Um, pop, pop, pop. There you go. Thank you, CK. All right. I think we got it. There you go. All right. Now we press on this right here. Give it a little bit of time. All right. Elden Ring DLC Shadow of the Earth Tree National Media Exclusive Interview with Hidetaka Miyazaki. The story of Shadowland, <laughs> Shadow of the Earth Tree, drawn on the target, no, drawn on the largest DLC in the past, the details of which are clear. It's going to be a bad translation because it's automated, but still, let's do our best here. So, the book, which is an action RPG that becomes a fading person and becomes King of Erd, a narrow space, is full of charm, a rich world composed of vast open fields, a well-structured well undulating dungeon, a battle that spreads out with a variety of weapon species, magic and prayer, and actions such as horse riding and jumping. Dude, this... <laughs> This is the translation of all time, guys. <laughs> I'm going to have to translate that lore afterward. A world full of threats and unknowns, free adventures and hand sweat battles, <laughs> and a sense of achievement for victory expressed in a maximum volume. Elden Ring not only made a big hit, with more than 20 million worldwide shipments in the year since its launch, but also the world's four major game awards, Golden Joystick Award, The Game Awards, DICE. He has earned high mark, such as winning the Game of the Year Award at the Awards and Game Developers Choice Awards. Such Elden Ring download content, Shadow of the Erd Tree, the development of the Shadow of the Erd Tree, was revealed on February 28, 2023. The title and one point of art uh, were published, but a year later without a sequel. Guys, I am so sorry. This is like, this is insane. This is incomprehensible. Uh, however, February 21st, 2024, from Software Official X, it was announced that the trailer Shadow of the Earth Tree would be released. <clears throat> and at the same time as February 22nd, 2024, the moment was waiting for fans all over the world. Finally, with the trailer of Shadow of the Earth Tree, it became clear that its release date will be June 21st, 2024. Okay. So, because the trailer, the trailer was revealed on the 22nd, it was clear that the release date was going to be June. Okay, um, a new story of fading drawn on new stage and a new element that colors a new adventure. I gave the details to Mr. Hidetaka Miyazaki, director, director of Elden Ring. I would like you to feel one end of Shadow of the Earth Tree from this interview, which is a monopoly in domestic media. That's high praise. Not only did it make a big hit with more than 20 million worldwide shipments in one year. Dude, I felt like we read that already. Yeah, we read that. Okay, there you go. Miyazaki said, I'm sorry for the simplicity, but I'm very happy. We're going to make a game that makes us feel interesting and valuable first. So the fact that it's more of a world to enjoy and value such things. I felt a lot of joy. I was very encouraged. Elden Ring, but overcoming difficulty, the team has not changed from our past work. But we have made such a team more accessible to more people 
with a high degree of freedom. I made the concept of adoption of open fields was part of that, but I think that worked well. So basically he's saying that they made Elden Ring um, more approachable because of the open world. 1 million sales in Japan alone. Miyazaki, yes, that point was also a big surprise and a joy. I also had several opportunity to hear the names Elden Ring from people who interact with me on a daily basis, not at work. And I remember feeling that 1 million, 1 million bottles sold was amazing. So basically 1 million copies sold in Japan. I really appreciate the users who played. Okay, Mr. Miyazaki, I was wondering if the development had the premise that I would firmly drop the experience I wanted to bring to the users. I think, I think that's what happened to many years. I actually have no idea what this question means. Miyazaki, I agree. As a director, the experiences you want the users to enjoy through the game, the value and emotions you want to feel, are at the heart of the game development. I want to be killed here, like this, lol including what I said. But that's not all. If my opinion is not absolute and I think there is a problem or a better way, the staff will be open and will often be convinced and accepted. Not limited to Elden Ring, but I think it's an advantage and fun for everyone to make something. Okay, question. As a result, I think it's a game that adjusts to the limit but that leads to the underlying appeal of the game of From Software and the sense of the user's experience. Is Elden Ring is also a fragmented story and setting, and the view of the world by players is hollowed out. Miyazaki. There are several reasons I adopt a fragmentary storyteller, including Elden Ring. First of all, I want the gameplay experience itself to be the story of the user. That's why we don't tell a solid story to the tongue. On the other hand, I want to leave the user's imagination in the story. That's because the gameplay experience itself leads to which a user's story, and I think so. <laughs> Sorry about that. This is like this is confusing, like how much the sentence doesn't make sense. Uh, okay, let me start over. So and I think so much fun to simply imagine and indulge in the margins. You also have the fun of collecting and understanding the fragments. Oh, that kind of thing. It's like connected. I am very happy to consider, to consider it to the users as they have their intention. I myself may read such consideration interestingly. I wonder, low-key guys, I wonder if this sentence actually refers to the video we sent to From Software translated in Japanese. Like, low-key. I am very happy to consider it to the users as they have their intentions. I myself may read such consideration interestingly. Like, obviously, this is a Google translation, but I'm thinking, like, is he referring to, like, the stuff we send? It could be a thing, because we are technically the users. All right. Let's, uh, let's read that. Question. Shadow of the Earth 3 announced on February 28, 2023, but the release date was finally released after a year. First of all, I would like to ask you when you have been developing. So how long was the development? Miyazaki, I wonder if it was the end of the main part of the development that began to image the development of the DLC somehow. Elden Ring and the whole concept, there were some parts that could not be included in the main part, so initially. And I thought it would be nice to put them out in the form of a DLC. So basically, they crammed as much content as they could on the main release and they kept developing afterward and that happened to be the, the, the DLC. However, at that time I was really just an image and focused on the development of the main part. In fact, the development of the DLC started after the release of the main part, after some kind of calm update. 
So that does confirm it. From Software had not started the 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 development of the DLC until after Elden Ring was was released. That's pretty much what it said here. I was curious about the title because of the subtitle Shadow of the Earth Tree. Miyazaki, Earth Tree is the golden tree that appears in this edition. Therefore, a direct translation of the DLC subtitle will result in Golden Tree Shadow. In the concept art that was announced in February 2023, and in the back left of Shadow of the Earth Tree, uh, there is also it's also known as Shadow Tree, the stage for the DLC that is or is that it is not the land between the golden trees, narrow space, but the land of shadows that is symbolized by the shadows. Whew. Okay. There's also a little more hidden meaning in the subtitle, but I hope that you can feel it in the actual gameplay. Another person in the torrent relation to the art is Demigod Singles, Holy Tree Mikela, whose existence is also mentioned in the main part. Mizaki, yes. Mikela is the main axis of the story depicted in this TLC. I'm worried or anxious to remember, but the story in the main part was simple line of following the guidance of blessings. That that's what it was like this time to follow the footsteps of Mikela heading to the Shadowland. So this is the Shadowland. Also, NPCs who follow the footstep of Mikela will appear. They become the storytelling story department of the DLC story. Interact with the protagonists, sometimes friends and enemies. And another main axis of the DLC story is the past of the Shadowland and the past of Queen Mikela. So you guys might be right, we might be going back in the past. Interesting screenshot here that we didn't see before. A lot of information has been revealed this time, so please just let us know. You said Queen Marika's past is stalled, but will the DLC's time axis be the past? Oh, Miyazaki said no. It will be the same as the main part of the time axis. The distant past or the future is not the stage. Interesting. So it might be a dream of some sort. I think the Shadowland and the past of Queen Marika is, as much as the history of the Shattering War in the main part. What is the team that Miyazaki is trying to draw with Shadow of the Earth Tree? Miyazaki, well, that's hard to answer. That's exactly one of the things I want the users to experience. And I wonder if whatever I say here will be naughty. Basically, if he's supposed to say. He, I, basically, he's not supposed to answer that. Heroes were drawn in the main part, but does that not change in the DLC? Miyazaki, yes, the team of hero remains the same. I think the character female depicted in the key art is easy to understand, but he is also a hero. The chair where Mesmo sits is the same as the chair that was on the stage of the battle Hateful King Morgoth in the main part. And he is also synonymous with Godric, Melania, Lendern, Rykard, etc. It is also called Malicus Child. Oh, so this is not Rykard, guys. Not Rykard. Interesting. So this new enemy could be a new character. Is Jor R. R. Martin also involved in the drawing of this story DLC? Okay, so the interview earlier, they were not the ones... I mean, they, they repeated it, but they repeated the useless question. But this interviewer was the one who asked that. Market and Martin's involvement is no different from the main part, the world and story DLC. I don't need to read this one because we explained it earlier. And uh, we heard about it earlier. Okay. What do you care about is the volume of the book DLC, Dark Souls 3 and Bloodborne, which was, was released in about a year after the main part. So I'm hoping this time, LOL. I agree. I'm sorry that I kept you waiting. 
just when it comes to DLC volume, it's more clearly larger that compared to the DLC such as Dark Souls and Bloodborne. As a DLC, I'm sure it will be the largest ever for us. That's more than expected. What? Why has it become so huge? Miyazaki, when I thought about the wonderful experience of Elden Ring, even in the DLC, I felt the current volume was necessary. As there are threats to overcome, there was freedom to challenge it. The excitement of exploring the unknown and the discovery and encounter before the search. Elden Ring, it was a wonderful sense of adventure. You can taste that excitement again. What will the field that will appear in the DLC? What will the field... No. What will be the field that will appear in the DLC? Miyazaki, we have a new one that is different from the field in the main part. It includes an open field as well as a legacy dungeon and a smaller dungeon. It's bigger, more diverse than the main, the main part of Limgrave. I don't know if it's the wording here, but here the wording says one legacy dungeon and one open area. But it's still bigger than Limgrave, so... Uh, I don't know. It's hard to say, guys. Hard to say, but it might be a case of like uh, Stormvale Castle, Limgrave type size, but with more stuff crammed in between. I don't know, though. It's hard to say with the translation. Yeah, like Landale Shaded Castle type deal. Something like that, maybe. But I don't know. I have a feeling this might be a translation error because I really doubt that this is just one legacy dungeon, honestly. Your translation on that part is pure plural on all the terms. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that's what I thought. Because that, that just would be very strange to only have one legacy dungeon after all this work. You can send screenshot. No, that's fine. I believe you. Thank you, though. Okay. How do you access the area? From the main field part, it is not a landline, but a transfer. The entrance is a large cracked cocoon <laughs> or a dead arm hanging from on the stage of fighting Blood Monarch Moog. <laughs> I love how it, <laughs> it translated as Moog. <laughs> Sorry. Moog. You must also defeat Blood Monarch Moog and start breaking Lantern to head to the field of this DLC. It is possible to play the second half of the main part, which is also difficult. Moog! Is it possible to play... Uh, sorry, okay. Miyazaki, I agree. I think the main parameter difficulty will be in accordance with the second half of the main part. So basically this this says that the difficulty for the DLC will be more in line with like the later difficulty in Elden Ring, which was explained to us in uh, in the other interview or in the other explanation of the interview. Basically the approach to difficulty has not changed from the main part. It's also because you have the freedom to challenge the threat and there's also a Merinian storytelling and Crouch Boss in the main part. Is it possible to traverse the fields of the main part and the fields of the DLC? Yes, it is possible. As I said, the fields in the main part and the DLC are not land continued, so the traffic is by transfer. You can do it freely. So basically you can go in and out of the DLC, I believe. That probably also means that you can like fast travel so basically he asked the details, but what does fast travel do? This is the same as the main part. Discover the blessing and you'll be able to make transfer there. So, you know, it's not like it's going to be like a separate land. Like, um, well, I mean, it is a separate land, but you're still going to be able to travel from a site of grace in the main game to a site of grace in the DLC, which I thought to me that's pretty obvious, but I guess the guy had to ask, whatever. DLC progress can affect the ending of this edition? No, I've never done that. And the progress of the event in this part doesn't change the content of the DLC. It's okay to think that the DLC story will be complete in the DLC. Is there a new element in the DLC? A DLC only level up element has been added to the system. 
A DLC only level up element has been added to the system. Guys, I don't know why, but the more the more the clues add up, the more I feel like our theory I can find it. Right here. The more I feel like our theory about this necklace here, right there, this necklace that was shown. Uh, no, that wasn't the screenshot. That was shown here. So basically, here's the logic, guys. Let me start over. Here is the logic. You have this necklace over here. Right there. This necklace right here, right? You have this necklace right here. And you might be thinking, well, it's part of the armor, you know? Like, it's part of the character's armor. But I want you to pay attention to not just the necklace, but... Um, see if we can get a good angle. No, not here. We're getting there, we're getting there. Okay, there you go, right here. So this right here, there you go. You got the necklace, you got the armor, you got this thing here. Then when you take a look at this right here, you can notice that this is the same armor in this screenshot as it is in this part of the trailer. Although the difference is the character does not have this helmet and doesn't have the necklace that is like the necklace is not visible here it's not here there's no necklace there's no hat either but there's no necklace here and when it comes to the way the elden ring menu is laid out at the moment you have four talisman slot but you still have two empty slots right here two empty slots right here and these slots have always been filled it has always been filled okay which means that when it comes to this interview a dlc only level up element has been added to the system it does not matter if it's the necklace that we showcased earlier or if it's something else but this element is likely going to fill those right here. Either it's a covenant, either it's a new system, something new. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't know what it is, but this is going to get filled. This is going to get filled, guys. This is Dark Souls 3 right there, right? This is Dark Souls 3. This is the inventory. This right here, they're not going to leave that blank. They're not going to leave that blank. They're going to add something here. And I believe that this is what this is referring to. A DLC only level up element has been added to the system. Obviously, this is a probably a mistranslation, but but it's going to be a DLC something that's going to do something. I think that's fairly accurate. Probably just a new category. I don't know what it's going to be, but it's going to be something. Those slots are going to get filled. All right, so let's keep going. For Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, sorry. For Sekiro Shadows Die, for Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, it's easy to see if you can imagine something like offensive power. Uh, but apart from the traditional level, it only works in the field of DLC offensive power. This is what I've been prepared for: freedom to challenge threats. This boss is encouraging, so. Explore elsewhere and become stronger and then re-challenge. What you said makes it easier to experience even in high-level zones. On the other hand, by reducing the increase in offensive power, you will also be able to experience the threat as a low level. 
What the fuck is he? <laughs> dude, these fucking translations are insane, dude. I don't know for you guys, but it's hard to make... Sometimes it's hard to make up with what is what it's saying. Yeah, that translation is do is doo doo, man. Is there any weapons or magic or prayers added? Yes, many weapons, magic, ma martial arts, etc., are added. This is one of the sales of the DLC. <laughs> In particular, for weapons, eight new weapon species <laughs> will be added. <laughs> Of course, there are tradition or there are additions to existing weapon species, but there's new species, guys. New weapon species are coming. Eight are also. <laughs> there are quite a few weapons in the main part, but what specific weapons will DLC add? New species. First, there is a large Japanese sword. Oh shit! He talks about it. First, there's a large Japanese sword. I fucking told you guys the great katana was inevitable. There's a large Japanese sword. I told you. I told you there would be a feat weapon. And I told you there would be a great katana. And I told you the DLC trailer was coming this month. Who's Lore Master? Who is it again? Lore Master is always right. All right. <clears throat> okay, first there's a large Japanese sword. A larger Japanese sword. And a larger Jap no. <laughs> and a reverse sword. So, okay, the curved sword that we saw in the DLC, uh, in the trailer, the, the DLC trailer, the paired one, this is probably what this is. But that means that we have a great katana and a colossal katana. <laughs> So we have like two new types of katanas. That's crazy, which is relatively close to the Royal Road. Fuck, I think he's probably referring to a weapon there, but I have I have no idea what, what this translation means. And a characteristic, highly novel direction. I probably, I think he probably means like some wacky weapons for the rest, like wacky new ones. As if Kiba's already w were not long enough. It's gonna be, yeah, it's it's gonna be interesting. So, great katana, colossal katana, and some new curve swords that we've seen in the trailer. One sec. First of all, we have a direction that is relatively close to the classics. Uh, such a large Japanese sword, such as the large sword, the Gyakun Tenken. But we also have a direction that is more distinctive and highly novel. For example, it might be a fighting game inspired by a monk. Or something like dueling shield that combines offense and defense. There's also throwing dagger where all the attacks are thrown. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so thanks for the thanks for the translation, Ed's up. So basically. Basically, right here, the entire weapon is pew pew. The entire point of these daggers, all the weapons, are thrown attacks, guys. <laughs> it's all pew pew range. Oh my god. I, I'm going to be honest, I don't think I like that. I don't like that. There's enough range bullshit in this game. I don't like that. I was more happy to think that it was a new Ash of War. Yeah, boy. What else was there? Uh, there was... Um... Dueling shield combines offense and defense. Yeah, we saw that. It might be a fighting game inspired by monks. So basically the, the power type thing. So this is going, going to be its own weapon class. Um... Try to find it. Where's the feet part? I think it's right here. Yeah. 
So, yeah, the feet weapon are basically confirmed there. So this is this is a new weapon. This is a new weapon, but I don't think it's necessarily necessarily a feat weapon. It's like a monk type stance or type power. Like a fighting game pretty much, he said. So it might not just be kicks. There's probably punches in there as well. Um Do you think the DLC will be easy if someone is maxed out with stats? If you are not on NG plus 7, and even if you are on NG plus 7, if you are max level, it will absolutely be easy. You can cheese pretty much everything that From Software has to offer with its broken systems that are available at max level. Yes, it will be easy at max level. Okay, let me... Go back down to chat. All right. Okay. I think that even if you are using the weapon species of the main part, you can enjoy it freshly. Basically, he's just said there that you don't need to use the new weapons to enjoy the DLC, which I think is a given. At the trailer release in this announcement, I would like to pay attention to weapons. Also, the trailer had an unseen enemy like Lion Dance. Is that the DLC boss? Yes, that Lion Dance is, in a sense, a DLC-like boss. The first is the Land of Shadows, where America became a god and the Golden Tree was born. Of course, there was a pre-Golden Tree culture. That Lion Dance is a character from that culture. So I hope that you can feel the smell of different cultures. <laughs> Dude, that translation is fucking goaded. I hope you can feel the smell of different cultures, guys. Which is a little different from the main part. <laughs> uh, the wording is just funny, man. And the background depicted in the new art... Dude, this definitely proves without a doubt that Miyazaki has a feet fetish. It's just, you know, it's so obvious to all of us. And the background depicted in the, the new art, a veil-like thing is drawn on in the sky. Miyazaki, yes, the Shadowland, which is the stage of DLC, is separated from the narrow ground that is the stage of the main part. It is the image of being separated from outside and hidden. And that veil is also a symbol of it. The mystery is just getting deeper, but I look forward to new encounters. A quick question is, can you see a dedicated ending when you clear the DLC area? There is no single ending or end credit flowing. However, the DLC clear has been adjusted to be clear. And a little production is available to make it feel. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. After the delivery of this DLC, can you create content such as DLC that will further expand the world of Elden Ring? Oh, no. So far, I've never been planning another DLC after this time. There are no DLC planned, guys, after this one. I feel that it is clear to me that no DLC is planned in the smell of the future. However, that does not mean that all of Elden Ring is complete. You may have told the same story when Dark Souls 3, but I don't want to make assert assertion that close that close the possibilities in the future. So it's not guaranteed, but it's not guaranteed. But they have no DLC plans for the future, basically. Not just the DLC unit, but uh, Elden Ring, the release of the included version, including the main part and DLC, has also been decided. Miyazaki, yes, I would be very happy if anyone could take this opportunity to play Elden Ring for the first time. As I mentioned earlier, in order to get to the field of DLC, it is necessary to proceed to some extent with the main part. So, I think it is possible to capture the main part before the DLC is released. It's still before the DLC was released, but what makes it possible to look back at Elden Ring at this point by making, by making a break here? 
Miyazaki, the development of the DLC is not completely finished yet. So they have, they're not done yet. So it cannot be such a heartbreaker. Bitter lol. Whether it's a main part or a DLC, it's always desperate when you're making it. I want more development time. I'm anxious, but when I'm done, I feel that I was making it for a really long time. I love how this, I love how it specifies bitter lol. Like that means like a sarcastic laugh or something. <laughs> like ha 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 ha. <laughs> like kind of like that. <laughs> yeah, I wish I wish I was done. <laughs> Whether it's the main part of the DLC, it's always this. Okay, sorry, I read that. Of course, there were many hardships there, but above all, it was a great time. The staff on the development team were bullying. <laughs> Wait, what? It was a great time. The staff on the development team were bullying. Everyone involved was just a team. <laughs> and working with Martin was a great honor. Dude, we were just bullying, but it's okay. It was just a team. <laughs> oh, man. I can't with these translations. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great time bullying the staff, but don't worry, it was just the team. <laughs> oh, I can't, man. Shout <laughs> and then the shout out to Martin afterward. It was great bullying the team, but don't worry, it was just the team. I also want to give a big shout out to George R. R. Martin. Oh, man. Oh, I can't anymore. God. What are we doing? This fucking interview is crazy. It is it, it is honestly, like, extremely difficult to read. Like, it's just so fucking difficult because it's so all over the place. It's like, it's almost impossible to understand. It's like guessing work. Oh, my God. Okay, let's continue. Let's finish it at least. Okay. <clears throat> let's start that this part again, my favorite. But above all, it was a great time. The staff on the development team were bullying. Everyone involved was just a team. And working with Martin was a great honor, an inspiring one. I might be scold if I say this, but I'm not just a job. There's a part where I'm making a game in a lively way. And even in that sense, Elden Ring is a difficult experience was. I think I was really lucky to have many wonderful users, but no, by all means, I'm just grateful. So do you want to make a game of scale with Elden Ring? Yes, there is. I don't know if it will be started right away, but if it is allowed, I would try. No, I would like to try it. I think all the staff are, but I would like to take advantage of, uh, of this experience with Elden Ring. Above all, creating a built big world and adventure is really fun and exciting. A, following, um, Mikula's, a story following Mikula's footsteps heading to Shadowland, Drowned There, Shadowland, and Queen Mar Marika's past, strong enemies who have not yet been seen to challenge by using new weapon species. There's still a lot to worry about, but first of all, the players who want to start here and land on a narrow space have already overcome many difficulties. And the heroes of the war, of the war have also become get ready for the coming time. Woo! Okay, that's done. Jesus Christ, dude. I don't think I've ever read something as difficult to read in my entire life. Like, this was as incomprehensible as there could be, like, with beyond belief. Uh, all right, let me read the good translation by Plex here in chat, who's doing God's work. Okay, so, the story following Mikola's footsteps toward the lands of shadows and the past of the land of shadows and Queen Marika's are depicted there. Unseen formidable enemies will be challenged by making full use of newly introduced weapon types. 
Okay, that's not really important though. There are still many things to be concerned about, but first of all, we are happy that the release date has been decided and the players who are about to start from here and descend into the lands between have already overcome many difficulties and become heroes of war. If you're even if you are if you are a current player, be prepared for what's to come. Bitter lol. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh man oh man well guys it's been uh, it's been an interview I can say that much but we made it bitter lol <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's just a team, dude. Don't worry. <laughs> dude, there's so many memes in there. Like, it's just crazy. <laughs> there was so many memes crammed in that interview. Oh, man. Dude, the bitter lol is, will be a meme now? I just hope so, dude. I hope so. Moog. Oh, yeah, Moog. <laughs> what is that translation of Mog, dude? Moog. Oh, man. Well, I'm excited, guys. We're going to take uh, just a recap really quickly. We're going to talk about everything that was great in the DLC trailer and a lot of things that were noteworthy and important before we wrap things up. So let's uh let's start right away so let's go frame by frame so what we learned about the well the start of let's start with the the start here so you're going to be able to access the dlc by uh with the egg here i mean that was pretty obvious but we had confirmation of that in the interview so that's one so to enter the dlc please enter moog's egg <laughs> bitter lol and then afterward, the size of the DLC will be a little bit larger than Limgrave. It will have a few legacy dungeons. And from what we understand and what we can actually even see here on screen, uh, From Software is attempting to bring sort of the open world, like bridge the gap between the open world and legacy dungeon by making like uh the open world areas quote like more dense like here don't take me word for for word for it but from our understanding that's what it sounds like like they're basically making the open world here and in between between the vast kind of empty open world that we're used to and the legacy dungeon which which are completely crammed with content so expect the dlc to be some sort of an in-between in the open world between the elden ring open world that we already have so basically more content less like empty space and nothingness <laughs> bitter lol <laughs> sorry i'm gonna stop okay then afterward so that's for the open world that's for the size of the open world um obviously the mood for this dlc seems to be a bit more toward dark fantasy and again here uh just wanna take another look at some of these shots where we see the terrain you can see that just in these scenes that are showcased there's a lot more a lot more structures it seems like the paths are a, lot, a little bit more guided uh so again to recap on the point that the open world is not is likely not going to be as empty because that is that seems like this is what he was trying to convey in that interview that their direction for the open world here is a little bit different than the direction for the open world in the main game meaning that it's going to be more content dense um obviously we're gonna have new armors right so some new armors include this helmet here. That's a new piece. Obviously, the rest of the armors as well, but we can't really see it. This is going to be new armor, new weapon. Speaking of new weapons, we have new... We had we have eight new weapon species. We have eight new weapon types. Uh, some of which that are concerned are great katanas, colossal katanas, 
um monk like powers so you'll be fighting like fighting games which include kicks and then paired curved swords actually the paired curved swords is a little bit ambiguous because he mentioned some sort of curved sword new weapon but we assume it's the paired paired curved swords so and also there's the um the, sh the new shield as well that we see in this trailer later on the uh the, the twin blade like shield that's also another one so these are the reverse held swords the reverse held swords yeah the reverse held swords whatever they're whatever that is we also we also have this new armor here that looks amazing and these pots, I don't know if these are the exact pots that we're going to be collecting, but it's likely indicated that there's going to be a new pot consumable that we're going to see in this trailer later on. We also have this beautiful new heavy armor right there. It's another one. Here we see an area that, that's reminiscent of St. Trina, perhaps likely a sleep area. Has something to do with this character, maybe. Rest speculation. Ronaldo in all its glory. Ronaldo, which is uh, Ronaldo's brother. New armor right there. Really cool with the, the cape and all. We don't know either a um, Madness Swamp right there or Dead Blight Swamp. Also, uh, cool, cool, really good looking area there. Uh, for the painting, people wanted to mention that we see this old man as a boss later on. So this is a uh, this looks like a normal dungeon, like the dungeons we get in the base game, but looks more interesting. Look at this freaking beautiful castle! Amazing, amazing castle, beautiful. Get the boss right there. Uh, for the new stuff, what else is relevant here? More boss stuff. Dead Blight, though. <laughs> I did not even notice the first time around, but Dead Blight moment. Some new boss right there as well. It's going to be interesting if we... Uh, actually, now that I see it, I don't think we noticed earlier that... Um, it could be... This could be a new shield, guys. Could be a new great shield right there. I think this might be a new great shield that we didn't notice the first time around. New enemy here. People were speculating that this might be Rikard, although the interview seems to indicate otherwise. Also, his weapon, it seems like the weapon functions similar to the Ring Knight Spear from Dark Souls 3, from what we've seen so far. The double curve sword moveset, we assume that the paired curve sword are a new class, but we're not sure yet. Uh, the double daggers here, what's special about them is uh, what you see there. Let's slow it down a little bit. What you see in this sequence, these double daggers are a new weapon class that consists only of throwing attacks. So all the attacks that these throwable or that these daggers have like everything is a throwable attack so that's also new so this is not a consumable this is not an ash of war basically every attack is thrown dagger for this new weapon class so interesting new new weapon there new spell right here no uh, i'm sure you guys have noticed already though Let's uh, keep going at normal speed. There you go. That's uh, this attack right there. That is the the new fighting like monk as described. This is a new weapon class, which is interesting because if it's a new weapon class, we might actually see many variation with different kick attacks or different like types of attacks. So this is confirmed to be a new weapon class. So feet weapons are real, fellas. Feet weapon confirmed. Lore Master was right. 
Also, speaking of lore master, this armor also likely going to be playable. Looks beautiful. This weapon as well. Some uh, new twin blade of some sort that the player also has uh, later on in this trailer. So we're going over the notable things. This is another notable one. This big pot here, we don't have confirmation of this, but logically speaking, uh, the general consensus is that this here is going to be a new type of craftable pot that that is going to be able to be thrown like the pots you have, but that's going to be a new one, bigger, better, big nuke like this. Which honestly looks kind of nice. Uh, I'm excited for this one. This looks fun. This, guys, guys, guys. Also, I don't want to skip too fast. But there was also another important bit. And that last... Um, let's just rewind one tick here. In that last sequence. All these new enemies here, likely going to be wearable armor. We get a new shield, a new axe, a new spear. So a lot of new stuff in there. Looks all good. Really interesting stuff. It's going to be fun. There, right there though. Oh my god, look at this beauty. The new lap armor. It's coming in town. It's coming, guys. Beautiful black iron lethal armor. It's going to be great. I hope that this armor has enough poise. God, I hope it does because if it does, I'm taking it. I'm sh I'm shotgunning that armor. You guys can copy me, but you're just going to be G9 clones afterward. It's too late. Too late already. And then we got the, the cool crossbow, similar to Gale. Although it shoots more, could be useful for like a finisher or something. We'll have to see in-game, like if you can see how you can free aim it, free aim it or not. Take the cap off. Oh yeah, I am I am absolutely taking the cape off for this one, no doubt. Yep. Oh, this one, guys. This one, we need to see it in real time. The new, the new dragon roar with two roar. Check this out. He's, just check this out. There's two attacks. Look at that. One, two. The new dragon roar is a bear roar with two roars. That's crazy. That's just crazy. And also, by the way, we get a glimpse at another new armor here, but we don't see it fully. But this is an incantation, by the way, this, this new roar thing. Afterward, we get these double curve swords again. Likely part of that quote-unquote new class, not confirmed yet. These new, new Great Lands here, absolutely freaking stunning new Gravity Lands. I cannot wait to see what it does. I'm excited. Also, the enemy. Not this one. The enemy in this one, the rider, is fused with the boar. So he has no legs. So we don't know for sure if the armor is going to be playable. But I would suspect that it is. We got our uh, our friend from Africa. The, hi the almighty hippo. Some more bosses. This particular boss is... Uh, the one depicted in the picture that I mentioned earlier. Thanks for people in chat for uh, for making the link. And then uh, in this shot, we get the Ring Knight Spear type of attack, which is reminiscent of the Dark Souls 3 Ring Knight Spear. It's going to be a nice new weapon, we assume. Then we got our another new weapon class. This um, this new shield is part of one of the new eight weapon classes, so it is one of them.
Maybe the big pot is a trouble class. Oh, daylight. That's very interesting. And that could be the case. That could be the case, daylight. That's a very, very good point. Given that there's so many new weapon classes, that there's a weapon that's like daggers and it only throws daggers as attacks. The pot might be like a trouble class. You might be right. You guys might be right on that. That's a very good point. So yeah, that's uh, that's that's pretty much a uh, a quick breakdown of uh, the most important things that we've learned and we've seen in the DLC so far. It is coming out on June twenty first, twenty twenty four. The DLC is still in development. Keep that in mind. The DLC is not finished for them. It also, it's to be noted that they seemingly started, according to Miyazaki's interview that, that we just read, it was stated that they started the development of the DLC after they finished the game. So, um, so yeah. So that's that. Those are the important things. Uh, people in chat earlier also said that the Collector Edition was already sold out. So, I mean, there's nothing that stops you from seeing if it's sold out if you're looking to buy it. But So, yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. That's the complete breakdown and analysis of the DLC trailer and its related interviews. Guys, thank you so much for coming by the stream. Really appreciate everyone coming by today it was uh it was fun lots of uh emotions but yeah guys i think we're gonna end it here we're gonna raid someone playing elden ring i thank you guys so much for the support i'm gonna go and take a break you know eat something chill probably gonna lurk in some stream and then afterward I have to get back to work and then edit some vids for later today so that the people like you kind fellas that were not here today are going to be able to get this information as well so yeah good analysis thank you so much everyone for coming by really appreciate again good bullying team <laughs> bitter bitter laugh <laughs> bitter lol all right all right thank you guys thank you everyone for coming by really appreciate all of you <clears throat> all right let's see who is streaming right now All right, all right, all right. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, who's on right now? Okay, so Steel is back on. Let's raid Steel, because Steel raided us earlier. So let's send the crew back to Steel. Um, not there. All right, guys. Thank you so, so much again. Take care, everyone. Have a good rest of the day, and I'll catch you guys later. We're going to do some invasion streams soon as well to honor the coming of the DLC. All right, see you guys.